Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Saturday, January 28, 2023. And I would like to welcome everyone in the room and those participating online as I call to order this meeting of the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. We value everyone's input and have made sure to dedicate a portion of this meeting to hear from you. We look forward to your comments during that time as indicated on the agenda. Mr. Lyman, will you please call the roll? Mr. Carpenter? Here. Mrs. Dorn? Here. Mr. Kinsey? Present. Mr. Price? Here. Mrs. Anderson? Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next agenda item is an opportunity for the board to share any correspondence you may receive. Not hearing anything, we will move on to the open communication period. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kozak, you have the floor. Yes, so um, good news recognition. Um, uh, January is school board recognition month month and um, the previous meeting we did not have all the board members here so I thought I would push this to this board meeting because so obviously it's still in January. So um, on behalf of the staff, students, community, a sincere thank you for all that you do. School board members are citizen servants who shoulder critical responsibilities and often make difficult choices for our district all with minimal or about zero pay. Um, so serving has a link between the community in schools, school board members are elected to establish policies that provide the framework for our schools. Job's not easy. There have been and will continue to be difficult decisions. We just want to all say thank you for all that you do in leading our school district. So I do have some certificates here, and then we'll get a picture here. Mr. Kenzie. Anderson. Mr. Price, it's all over here. Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And Mr. Dorn. Yeah. So if we get a picture right over here, and then I'm not dressed appropriately. Come <laughs> on. That's just close enough. Well, I'm dressed. That's most important. <laughs> yeah. Mr. One, two, three. Thank you. Where's the part? I know. <laughs> Okay, up next, um, let's start with the motion. Can I receive a motion to recommend approval of membership to the Ohio School Board Association and appointment of board members to committee positions, which we will discuss during the discussion time. So moved. Thank Second. you, Mr. Carpenter and Mrs. Gore. Okay, let's move into discussion. Um, so these are committees that we've had um, for quite some time. I don't know, you just want to go like one by one down the on the list here and see who's interested and talk about it. Um, we can start with, I know who had the position last year. Um, I'm happy to continue as the OSBA legislative liaison, giving that report a few times a year unless anybody else wants it. I don't think that's what anyone's going to fight you for. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're not going to fight you for that. Uh, up next is the OSBA student achievement liaison. Last year was Mrs. Anderson. I'm fine continuing. Okay. 
the OSBA Capital Conference delegate, last year Mr. Carpenter. Um, I'm willing to continue unless somebody else wants it. But Sorry, I, I think it's important that someone that knows that they can go every year, depending on work schedules and whatnot. I, I don't know, like now, whether I can go in November. I hope to. But, so. well, yeah. Since I retired, retired yesterday, I will be available. No wonder you're all smiling. The alternate to that position, uh, last year was Mrs. Anderson. Okay, yeah, serving again in that role. Great. Representative of the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Education Foundation, BSCF, Mrs. Dorn. I've been doing that. I'm happy to continue. Admittedly, it's probably the most fun one, though. So if anybody else wants to, you're welcome to throw your hat in the ring. You don't mind if you have a good choice. No. Yeah. Yeah. But good to this, know. Is a, this is uh, an, an alternate, perhaps. I don't want to take it from you. Oh, you're welcome to it. <laughs> it, it, it. it. It is one of the ones that is more kind of I don't know, rewarding. Yeah, I would think so. Interesting. I would think so. How about if we go ahead and we officially make it? Because two people can be on a committee that's not a quorum. Would we like to yeah. add Mr. Like, Carpenter officially? I, yeah. and, be that be that. and that way, if somebody can't make it, there's a all in. So let's do that. Representative to the Financial Advisory Committee. Last year was Mrs. Gorn. Which is fine. That committee meets fairly infrequently, so it's not a huge lift. If somebody else um, is interested, that's fine, or I'm happy to keep it. All good. Okay. Uh, representative to the Belmont Sugar Creek School Safety Committee. Last year was Mr. Price. He does such a good job with it. Yeah, he does a really good job. So. Happy to continue. Happy to continue in that role. Okay. Representative to the Business Advisory Council, um, last year was me. I'm happy to stay in that one, but if somebody wants it, it's it's pretty cool to see industry leaders as well as educational representatives from around the county come together and talk about stuff. But I'm happy to keep it unless anybody else wants it. Okay. And representatives to a new committee, to the Active Shooter Response Team Implementation Committee. Can open up discussion for having the resolution we passed mm -hmm. says that you can have one or two representatives from the school board serve on that committee. Um, for you know, I think everybody showed interest in it, yes. or at least being willing to serve mm -hmm. in that capacity. So I definitely think we should do two. Yeah, I would agree with that. And. Uh, I would really like to, frankly, be on the committee because it's, you know, aligns with the safety um, work I've already been doing. Something I give a lot of thought to. Um, and, uh, so, so I'm myself promoting here, but I really would like to be mm -hmm. on the committee. I've already been meeting with police and fire for two or three years now. Whenever uh, I have some type of uh, relationships and knowledge of things we're already doing. I'd like to stay with that. Uh, I'm willing to defer my interest to others. So, I definitely would like to be on it um, if, if that's what the board would wish. Um, definitely bringing a teacher perspective to the table and making sure that all of our stakeholders and people are represented. Happy to serve if that's what you all would like. I, honestly, I, I trust each of you. Um, there isn't a single one that I would say oh, I don't want that person or I don't. Mind. But no, um, I I think we all have the best interest, and we're gonna whoever we pick for that is gonna put the extreme amount of thought and due diligence into that role. Mm -hmm. um, 
the list will get easier. <laughs> we need to figure out how we want to do it. Um, I'm also happy to serve in that role only if people would like me to, um, just given personal experience that I've gained over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, maybe we need to talk about how we're going to decide that. I mean, we could put it up to a vote, or we just keep talking. I kind of feel like if we have two positions, it would be smart to put someone forth who really knows that topic well or understands that, and then someone who doesn't. Um, because you need the person asking the questions that the community is going to be thinking of, that our staff is going to be. Someone who doesn't just assume that that's taken care of because they know that world. Does that make, does that make sense? Like, I think that combination, um, obviously it's going to be on the responsibility of both of those individuals to get as smart as possible on that topic. But I think like, maybe someone who is um, really pro is the wrong word, but like very comfortable in that world versus, and then someone who is more hesitant in that world um, to represent mm -hmm. the, the spectrum, I guess, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, you can. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I'd like to offer a comment. That I really agree that we need to have. What, you know, the most knowledgeable person needs to be one of the two. And I think Mr. Kinsey is clearly the most knowledgeable in this area. He's done extensive research. He's made contacts. He's aware. He was the, uh, you know, the, um, the drafter of, of the resolution that we passed that cleared, or clearly showed extensive research and understanding of the subject matter. Um, I can't imagine that we would not, because um, if not, whoever is on the committee is going to be calling him every other day saying, hey, what about this, what about that, or whatever. And so I can't, I can't imagine not heavily relying upon him. We're, we're fortunate to have someone who is, is knowledgeable in the area, of, both from a legal perspective as well as from um, what's been happening throughout the state and other school districts, um, knowledgeable um, legal out elements of it as well. And so, um, so I, I'm firmly of the opinion that Mike needs to be on the on that committee. I would concur with your perspective, Mr. Price, and also um, I I think that you would be an excellent candidate for that as well. And also, Mrs. Anderson um, and, and Mrs. Gore too. I, I wouldn't be comfortable with any, but uh, one of the things that comes to mind for me um, is that. Uh, you and I, Mr. President, are in our last year of elected uh, position. Um, would it make sense to have somebody who um, will be continuing on beyond 2023 in a kind of a guaranteed perspective as compared to you and I who would be up for the election? Um, just, that, just that perspective. And, and maybe maybe that's a moot point, but it doesn't really matter. So. And with respect to that, I understand. I also know that we're endeavoring to have this in place by the upcoming school year, sure. you know, by September. Audra, with respect to your concern, I fully get it. We have got to be connected to the community, to our staff, our administration, our teachers. And I guess personally, I see that as an opportunity as, as we build a smart, other than board member representation. The board members are not the essence of what the what the active shooter response team is, we are, or whoever is selected, are representatives to that committee. They are not, you know, or, sorry, they are not the essence of that committee. There, there will be a smart building of that committee with representatives I foresee from administration, um, you know, obviously police and fire, and other uh, individuals that would be recommended by people that would formulate this committee initially. And I think we talked was it's going to be two, two board members and then uh, police and fire, and then... Superintendent. Not fire. Not fire, yeah. Both police chiefs. That was in the resolution. Yes. One or two board members, both police chiefs or their delegate. Yeah. They want to have someone else. Right. And Dr. Kozak. Right. 
I think it would be wise if once we nominate who the board representatives are, that during the first meeting of that core team, that that team recommends who they think should fill out the rest of the team. Because I want to hear from those fire chiefs, like, hey, we, this is expertise that we're lacking or that would help. And they know that world in order to recommend who else should be brought in. Right. And so that's where I think your concern about hearing from the community can be addressed by, by that, you know, um, whoever would, you know, be invited, you know, incorporated in that, whether it's, you know, a community member or just a, uh, a, a prominence, whether it's a, you know, somebody on some other uh, governmental function or community function or just an individual from the community that has expressed an interest. I don't know. It'll be for the entire committee to make that decision. And I think, you know, the board members are, are getting represented. They're, they're part of the team. They are not, you know, um, it. You know, like, so there's, there's opportunity to still get you, what you're concerned about. I think, um, regardless of who we put on from the board. Yeah, maybe I <clears throat> misstated my. I don't know if it's not really a concern, but that sometimes when you get a room full of super experts together, mm -hmm. a room full of surgeons together, and they all start talking, right. they talk at this level, and what comes out of it doesn't make sense to the people who aren't at that level. Right. So having someone who is not at that level represented to make sure that the output of that committee is, like, not that those are, the output of that committee is not going to be a public document or whatever, it's going to be post uh, and whatnot, but it needs to be it, it needs to be understood by people who will have to action it. Right. The people who it's on the ground. That might not be yep. that level, have that level of understanding of all the incidents. Again, no, I think it doesn't necessarily mean that the person that is not the expert has to be a board member. You know, in other sure. words, Agreed. The, the, the team has to be responsible needs to be smartly built with representatives that address absolutely your concern there, you know, because, yeah, it needs to be eligible, and there needs to be somebody come in with a left field statement, you're like, oh, you know, never thought of that. Again, you can get that without necessarily getting it from the two police chiefs or from the two board members, that whoever they're going to be. It can come from a, a prudently chosen other representative. Be an administrator, um, say teach. I don't know. The, yeah. Obviously, the team is in, is in the process of being formulated here. So. But I think the point is well taken. It sounds like the intent is that having somebody there who can check those base premises mm -hmm. and make sure that <coughs> it's well understood. Right. And clearly, the interest of the board is being discussed here, and that will be re recognized by any board member that is designated for this. You know, to, to make sure it's a well rounded. You know, uh, team that is on the committee. And what's the time, like, what is the time commitment on that? How often do you know? Will they be meeting and things like that? I would say a little bit more often as we ramp things up and get things going, and then, you know, once things are up and going less periodically, and the resolution is at least once a year, I believe. So, okay. but at the beginning, it's going to be a lot more than that. Personally. Okay. As things are getting ramped up. So. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what the time commitment. Right. I don't know. But more so at the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've not heard a consensus. We have not heard your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> My first primary goal is making sure everybody else is heard. <laughs> well, we can go around and say two names, um, if that's something we want to do, or we can further discussion and see if two clear names come forward. And if I don't hear anything in the next 10 seconds, we'll go around and say two names. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, 
<laughs> Mr. Lyman, will you please call the roll? Um, knowing. Okay, you know what? Yeah. So I would like to make. I would like to move that we amend the original motion as it's stated on the agenda with the two names that each representative speaks. So uh, whoever majority rules here, if majority, and if we don't get a majority of the same two names, then we start over. And the top two both get it. Well, if it's, if it's an amended motion, which is what it is, if we need to have a majority. So a majority of the five people need to say the same two names. And if we don't, yes. And if we don't, that's fine. Then we have more discussion because that amendment fails and we start over and we do it again. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Mr. Ronnie, uh, when you're ready, please call the roll. And each person will answer with two names of who they would like to represent them on the implementation committee. Okay. Mrs. Norm? Kenzie and Carpenter. Okay. Mr. Carpenter? Kenzie and Price. Mr. Kenzie? Kenzie and Price. Mrs. Anderson? Kenzie and Anderson. And Mr. Price? Uh, myself and Mr. Kenzie. So we have three Kenzie and Price. Okay, so, so motion passes. Good job. <laughs> motion passes uh, that the original motion, as stated, is now amended to include Kinsey and Price. So now we can have discussion on that entire motion as amended. Any further discussion before we take a vote on that? And I think one more for that. Okay, not hearing any. Mr. Lyon, please call the roll on the motion as amended to include Kinsey and Price, please. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. And Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so that was for the implementation committee. Um, we now need to, we can open up discussion because um, we haven't passed everybody for all of the committees. Any, any further discussion on all the committee assignments that we discussed? Uh, I just like to make one comment, and that is that these are <clears throat> not really, uh, except for the active shooter, it's not really a committee of the board. It is a is a committee for the for the community and district, but not for the board. Excellent point. None, yeah. none of the committees are committees of the board. Oh, okay. board member. The implementation is not. No. no. Okay. It's it's, committees it's, that board members are on. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, this is this was making representatives to yes. other other committees. This is not creating or continuing an official committee of the board which has like special correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good point. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Lyman, please call the roll on adoption of all of the representatives to these groups. Okay. We're Would you like to so we've got all we're gonna we're voting yay or nay on all of the incumbents with the addition of adding Carpenter to BSEF as a second delegate. Yes. Yeah. And excellent point. Let, let me read through so we all know what the motion is. And this is discussion, so you can let me know if you want any single of these pulled out and voted on individually. I was thinking of voting on as a group. Um, so first of all, membership to the Ohio School Boards Association and appointment of myself as the legislative liaison. Mrs. Anderson as the OSBA student achievement liaison, Mr. Carpenter to the OSBA capital conference as a delegate, uh, Mrs. Anderson as an alternate to that, Mrs. Dorn and Mr. Carpenter representatives to BSEF, Mrs. Dorn representative to a financial advisory committee, uh, Mr. Price to the safety committee, myself to the business advisory council, and myself and Mr. Price to the Active Shooter Response Team Implementation Committee. Does anybody want to pull one of those out singularly? Okay, Mr. Lyman, please call the roll on adopting all of those. 
And Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Motion passes. All right, up next, Dr. Cosette. Yep. The Central Office Employment Resignation Leave Sessions. Yep, go on. Relatedly, uh, because we had at the last board meeting um, selection of the vice president, president, and uh, the approval of the budget, you know, I was not here. And uh, just wanted to say though that I understand that needed to be done, you know, because of the timeline for the uh, January 15th deadline. I think it was, and I was on a work trip, could not be here. We don't have the virtual option any longer. So, um, so I appreciate you all ready to move forward on that, and just want everybody to know I support you know, the votes and, and the appointments and the approval of the budget as it was. Um, so again, I regret I couldn't be here. Sometimes, you know, my real job, you know, that takes, uh, you know, 40 to 80 hours a week, uh, you know, I have to take priority. And so, but again, support the decisions that were made and um, just wanted to just clarify that. I really wanted to be here and I just could not, so thank you. Well, let me echo also, Mr. Price, uh, I was unable to be here and fully support the election of Mr. Kinsey as president and Mrs. Dorn as vice president. Um, and I'm quite happy to be in a member seat, quite mm -hmm. frankly, for a while. I don't think it's ever intended that the person who serves as president serve for long periods of time. So I appreciate um, Mr. Kinsey taking that role. So thank you. Um, recommend approval of employment contract for Dean Diaz as help desk technician, effective February 6, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Um, at 203, 203 days, regular schedule plus 17 extended days service, so actually 220 days. Step four, class one. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Second. Oh, this is Any discussion? Yeah, we had a, a, a great find. He was uh, previously employed in another school district, so he knows schools. He knows a lot of our software that we currently use, so he would be a good addition to our staff. What's his exact uh, duty? I mean, help desk te technician, so he's kind of level one of uh, all the help desk tickets that are coming in, and then he filters those out to the other people within the, the department. For IT? For IT, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is for IT. Yep. Is this a new position or a new? No, nope. I mean, it's, no, it's a replacement. Okay. So uh, we had a systems analyst position open. So Mrs. Rubel, who was the help, tech, mm -hmm. help desk technician, moved up to that spot. Okay. And so that why, that's why this spot is open. Okay. Yep. Hearing no further discussion, Mr. Lyman, please call me. <clears throat> Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. All right. Uh, legal counsel recommend approval of the firm of Frost Todd Brown as additional board school district legal counsel. So moved. Second. And just to be a little bit more specific here, this uh, firm is going to work with us mostly more specifically on our active shooter response team in that whole process. So um, they um, have some vast experience in that area. So I thought it would be prudent and the board thought it would be prudent to uh, have a firm that, that specializes that and had, not specializes in that, but has experience in that arena. So that's going to be their main focus for us, not the regular general kind of things. And for clarification then to the public, we still will have um, Sebastian Wolfman for justice. As, Correct. As our, as our council. Council. school council. Mm -hmm. So it's just Great. more specifically for the active shooter response process and, and so forth. Isn't there precedent for us using another firm for another specialty as well? I seem to recall. Special Special ed. For yeah. Best, for special ed. So yeah. yeah, there's just obviously certain areas that are just more right, you know, specific expertise is required and so on. So good. And just for clear clarification purposes, we are not like bound to, to any of the lawyers that we use. I mean, do we sign a retainer? Do we? There's no retainer. Okay. So There's, it's just on an as needed basis. On an as needed, every firm that we have is just on, on an as needed basis. Yeah. There's no retainer or um, any commitment to them at all. Okay. Mr. Lyman, will you please call the roll? 
Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Okay, moving into our work session portion of the agenda. Um, we're really privileged. Thank you very much. We have a representation from uh, union leadership here. Thank you for taking time on your Saturday morning. It's really appreciated. Um, we're gonna, yeah, we can get a little closer. We're hoping we can like hit the circle and make it a little bit more informal and comfortable. I guess the best we can do. And please don't forget coffee, donuts, snacks, bananas over there. Feels like you guys are testifying for Congress or something here. Weird. <laughs> 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 Probably not good. <laughs> Again, thanks for everybody being here. Maybe it might be helpful if you introduce yourselves and, and your role um, in the school district. I think it would be extremely helpful to the board just so they can get names with the face and so forth. Joel Keller. I teach third grade this year, but I've been in second grade and also a reading specialist in the district. Um, this is my eighth year in the district, but 20th in education. I am Lisa Lichtenberg. I'm an intervention specialist with Stephen Bell. This is my 21st or 22nd year in the district, and I have been a teacher for 33 years. I'm from I teach social studies at the high school. This is my 22nd year here. Uh, my name is Mark Carrera. I, I teach social studies at the high school. I serve as the SEA president, and this is my 24th year here. Hi, I'm Mary Kay Marsh, and I currently teach seventh grade social studies here at Belmont Middle School. Before that, I worked as a reading specialist at Stephen Bell. And before that, I was a substitute teacher for the district, and um, both my children went through the district and are graduates of Bellbrook. Hi, I'm Shelly Smith. I teach fourth grade at Bell Creek Intermediate. This is my 20th, 23rd year at Bellbrook. Uh, I am the SEA secretary, and my son graduated from Bellbrook High School last year, and he is a freshman at OU. Um, I'm Renee Main. I teach uh, fourth grade at um, Bell Creek. Uh, this is my second year doing fourth grade, but I did fourth grade special ed 26 years before that. I graduated from Bellbrook, so a Bellbrook fan all the way around. <laughs> and I'm the SEA vice president. And thank you for being here. And again, this is your executive committee, your leadership. Yes, we're missing two, three people, okay. but this is the majority. Okay. Three people are missing. Um, so the board thought it'd be. Uh, helpful to have a conversation with the union and I just want to also let you know or let everybody know that the um, SLAST, the classified union was also invited to, to be a part of this um, but a conflict was scheduling conflict she was they were not able to be here so that just clarifying also that they were also uh, invited to, to be part of the conversation so again just maybe start the conversation and then it can go you know, whatever direction we would like to go here but mainly centering around Better communicating both sides, gathering input, making the best of the relationship that, that we that we can have together and, and for the benefit of, of the students in the community. So uh, just uh, input, thoughts, comments. I, I think again, if the board wants to make other comments and thoughts, obviously, of uh, so forth. But I think that's the the gist of it is how can we better communicate? How can we better get along? How can we you know better really strengthen our relationship? I think would be kind of maybe. Center of, of the conversation. So, yeah. Mrs. Marsh, would you like to? <laughs> 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 well, um, <laughs> I do think. Okay. Well, yeah, I know in some of our conversations about having this conversation, um, you know, I, I think we all are starting from the same point. We all have that shared goal of wanting to do what's best for the students in our schools, in our community in terms of academic excellence and achievement, in terms of 
safety and general well-being. I think that is something that we are all very sincerely committed to, and that's where we need to start and work from. So I think you know it's great to acknowledge that we have that shared common goal to start off with. The other thing too is thinking about the purpose of communication. Right? Communication can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different circumstances from just basic messaging um, to trying to convince somebody of something. Um, I, we would like to look at communication as conversations, as the goal of creating understanding. Right? Um, so when you have a conversation, you are spending as much time listening and reflecting as you are talking. And that's how you come to those understandings and realizing what other people's perspectives and needs are. And hopefully it can be a difficult and complicated process, but it can end up helping us achieve that shared goal more effectively if we really are committed to the, the ongoing and the sometimes complicated part of having these conversations about lots of different educational issues. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 thank you for those that? words. I think that's absolutely spot on. Um, I really appreciate that. One of the challenges I have, it just me personally, and everybody else too, I love, absolutely we want to grow and have a need to grow in that. I think everybody absolutely does. Since we're only allowed to talk together as a group, like here in this public meeting, um, is there any ideas that maybe we can work on together about how to make that happen? I'd love to come up with a list of ways that we can better have those conversations. Um, some, sometimes I feel, and there's absolutely reasons for it, I support them wholeheartedly, but sometimes as a, as a Board of Education, we have these handcuffs on us that we can only talk here um, so we with each other. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'd love any ideas that anybody has, because I, I think we want the same thing for sure, and I think you said it very, very well. Is there an opportunity to work like something like this into maybe not necessarily every board meeting's agenda, but periodically so that you do have the opportunity? Because like you said, you can't, you, you have to be in the setting in order to talk to teachers, and not necessarily just us like it'd be nice to have different groups of teachers um, that you're able to speak with but I know your hands are tied in that way but like could you set up other meetings as part of I don't know like it doesn't have to be a work session per se or once a year like are there rules around it I don't know what the laws are either whatever we want in the context of a meeting it's just um, how how effective is the communication going to be? It's really hard to have even effective, like, if we're trying to make a decision, for example, I'll speak for myself, I'm trying to make a decision and I'm trying to, I'm getting all of these and we're getting inputs from parents, we're getting inputs from all over the place. Like, um, to have the only way we can get input from parents for, for people to come here and go on the record with a bunch of maybe, really energetically charged people sitting behind you, maybe the parents of your students. And, like, uh, and, and what helps me, what, it helps when Mr. Pereira stands up and you know speaks on behalf of the teachers, but often that is a summary and it's, a, it's numbers and it's in this percentage thinks this and this percentage thinks that, but what helps me personally make a decision is hearing the nuance, hearing the why, hearing the, why are you saying that? What makes you feel that way? And then also hearing the how much there was dissenting opinion. Why do they feel that? Like, I want to hear the why, and that's how I approach when I'm talking to community members. You know, but we don't. It's it's really hard to make those. I can't get the perspective. Of what is that really like for a first grade teacher? Like, we only get ninety nine percent think yes and. Well, it all comes down to relationships. Like yeah. that's what we do in our classroom every day. Like until you feel safe, until until you feel we're talking safety. Like mm -hmm. until I feel safe to take risks or put something out there, or I feel connected enough that I'm willing to share. That. I mean, even I said that you know we met a little bit 
ahead of time. I'm like, this being live streamed gives me a little right. bit of anxiety. <laughs> being told, I mean, truly, yeah. 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 right. being Absolutely. truly candid. But I think until we're able to do that and build that trust with one another, we're never going to get to that common goal. Right. Like we have, to, like, yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, things have happened in the past. We've got to move through. But we can do it. We just have to. We have to build those relationships. So even mm -hmm. if this is bananas, but like a team building thing, like do we yeah. go to our ropes course and like yeah. do it together and like get to that point? I mean, some that's mm -hmm. a very out of the box thinker, but um, I don't know. We have to have like a common shared experience, or we're never. We can keep showing up to these these meetings, keep showing up to these meetings, and it's going to be formal. It's never going to be, you know get to know each other as people or you know even just hearing you know that Renee went to Bellbrook like that's probably new information like just even like getting to know each other on a personal level is really important to moving forward in any way in any relationship. I guess that goes to the heart of my question like that psychological so we can all become best friends <laughs> but is it possible to sit here knowing that you're on live stream and there's anyone right. else can come in to the conversation, like, is it possible to have that? Even if we all had that safety with one another, I can tell you that this, right. even though I trust all of these people up here a ton, like, where it's always like inviting strangers who you don't even you know don't are know listening into your conversation, so it you never feel so right. So, can sure. I just reflect back on what you were talking about with the various surveys that we've conducted and not having the underneath type of like, what's the rationale? Most of those surveys have always been conducted immediately after a rather, you know, contentious right. decision has right. been made. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that it's probably not that difficult to connect the dots about why teachers would feel certain ways right. as that's when we're making those surveys. Every survey also, which we have not shared this part with you, we allow for like comments. Um, and you know some of those comments i think it would be difficult to stand up here and express what some of the people say like within that in terms of how they feel i do think that a lot of it's not just in this district i think it's educators as a whole um when you were discussing before about how when you get experts in the room and you have surgeons and they talk up here i think teachers it's the same thing and we don't necessarily i mean we are all experts and we don't necessarily feel that when we talk about things that it's easy to communicate how we feel to people that are not as familiar, perhaps, but are rep elected representatives, but it's still difficult to kind of convey some of those opinions as far as that goes. Especially when you have a finite amount of time to do it in. It's right. not sure. like, a, yeah, it's right. Right. Very, it's easier if, you, if we could all sit down exactly. and like, walk me through this, show me what happened in your exactly. class yesterday. Like if we could converse and I could ask questions sure. along the way and mm -hmm. be. But the structure like, isn't set up no, that way, which is what we're going back to. So how right. do we. Love for us to create a like, structure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's still I, a little yeah. 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 for sure. And one yeah. of the biggest stumbling blocks that I have found since I got on the board was that we are not supposed to talk. To right. You. And so, so it creates division. And I understand that there's reasons for that. I do understand that there's reasons for that. But just because that's what we've always done doesn't mean it's the best practice. So, I mean, if we could figure out a way to kind of circumvent that and not that, you know, so my only opinion gathering, unless you have my kid in your class, like, I mean, then we have a good relationship. We have that shared experience. My, I have to rely on Dr. Koza to bring that to us. And he does a good job, you know, telling us what you guys think. But hearing it from you guys and just hearing a survey where well, we don't, you know, it's triggered by an event, like Mr. Ferrer said, but there's no actionable steps. Like, we want this to be better, so here's some things from the teachers that you guys can do to help us feel better about the situation. It's always just like, we don't like this, this decision, but there's no like, this is what we would prefer, this is what we need from you guys. You know, so if we could get some actionable steps, maybe sometimes in those surveys, if those could be shared at some point, that would be very helpful too. I'm, I'm personally I'm genuinely grateful that y'all are here. Um, this has really, obviously, been a keen interest of mine since I've been on the board that we have a healthy relationship, you know, with <clears throat> and the teachers ultimately is what we're talking about here. And it's, it's there's no reason for it to, for it to be otherwise. I mean, it's it's not productive. Uh, and and so I think it's it's a pretty interesting observation that 
Joey said was that you know we don't have a, a means of talking on a regular basis. <laughs> Unfortunately, what you know, has precipitated a recent since I've been on the board, most of the communication when we've heard from from uh, the uh, union is when we've done something that wasn't popular. Now I'm not blaming on the union; it's the only time we're hearing. I think we're hearing now that we're all recognizing that we should facilitate a methodology by which we can, in a recurring basis, have conversations. So, you know, maybe it becomes a, a thing every other meeting, every meeting, whatever, just for a couple minutes, the union gives up and gives a, 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 you know, a perspective, you know, uh, reflecting the teacher's pers uh, you know, positions on things or just, hey, just some good news for once, you know, rather than something controversial. Um, and so, uh, you know, Mr. Curry and I talked, you know, and, and have interest in continuing to have those conversations because it's, it's not, there's no reason to have an adversarial relationship. Uh, it, it, is, it is not healthy for anybody, it's not healthy for the board, not healthy for the teachers, not healthy ultimately and most importantly for our, for our students. And so to me, it's just like we just shouldn't wait for the crisis to have the discussion. And so I think today this is not a crisis, right? So we, 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 we foresaw this as our annual where we kind of have like this off-site, if you want to call it that, but an off-site, we're still in the school system here. But, but uh, you know, kind of like a, a, a different type of meeting we have here. But I really would like to see you all more often than that, you know. Um, I think you know, we're allowed to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, you know, certainly. But when it becomes more than, you know, two board members and probably a little bit awkward if it's two board members, but at least legally, you know, uh, you go up to two, having conversations with with the board, uh, sorry, with, with the union. But uh, I just want to find ways that we, you know, just work together. The world has enough problems, you know. Let's, we have really an awesome little community here um, that is excelling in every sense, you know, within, this, within the school system. Let's just let's figure out ways to keep it going that way and stay, stay away from the edges that you know, cause conflict and things like that. We, you know, but if you look at, look at it, there's just been an unprecedented number of, of frankly, onslaughts to not only this district, but the entire country. You know, anything from, for us locally, was the, the, the levy issues, then it was COVID, then a myriad of other things, you know, that had, had been, you know, just really made it a challenge. Um, you know, I think most of you know I was in the military for a long time, and my wife always just said, see ya, when I would take off across the world or whatever, and a big hug when I came home. Uh, the board has been a little bit different yeah, because this is a volunteer thing, right? And so, uh, so she's like, yeah, you know, so this is, it, it, it's a challenge, you know, doing this. And but yet I enjoy doing it because I really, you know, want to see our, I just appreciate our district and want this district to provide for my children. I have six beautiful children that went through a beautiful school district and they came out the better for it, you know, so I'm really grateful for that and just, uh, Let's work together. You know, if I could speak to what you were discussing about, like we've since we negotiated that opportunity to have and to be able to speak in front of the board, we have talked about like trying to be more positive. But part of it is is like, and I I don't mean to talk like that, but part of it is realistically that teachers are tired like yeah. during the year, mm -hmm. and so like there are not a lot of yeah. teachers that show up, <laughs> and so when we get up, it is reactionary many times, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, we've had that intention of getting up and maybe, hey, these are positive things that are going on, but we just, I myself, and I apologize for that, because I do think you're right. We do need to be more positive in terms of what we talk about instead of only reactionary to things that we disagree with. I'm not blaming you for that. I'm just, I'm just no, saying no. We, don't, we don't currently have a construct. We've not introduced a right. recurring process by which we hear from you just about how's it going versus hey, this happened and we didn't like it, or even from the board, we heard this and we didn't like it, or whatever. It just needs to be just, so every other meeting, every meeting, whatever, just at least you have an opportunity maybe every meeting, then you can just review whether there's anything really to talk about, and it can be something positive too. You know? It's maybe so funny, because this is what we do in our rooms every day. This is social emotional learning, right? Mm -hmm. We have our check-ins with our kids, and if something's off, you don't check in when it's bad. You check in every single day, and you make sure everybody's regulated, so if they are in the red, that's not when you have the conversations, and that's when we've been having the conversations. Like you, you do it when everybody's on an even playing field. Everybody's, you know, tuffering for lack of a. It's not your emotions that's taking over. It's your logical brain that's able to process through and everything. And that's what we're doing day in and day out with kids and regulating and making sure we're coming at decisions from a logical, rational space instead of an emotional one. And having maybe a standard item on our agenda right. says, 
here's an opportunity for you to represent to speak and not always have to be Mr. Herrera. Right. Yeah, each of you, yeah, I'm not trying to put it on you. Right, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to hear only. You want to hear from others as well. I agree. So. Yeah. It's hard for me. I get to work. I don't have to be there till 7.35. I get there at 6.30 every morning. I bring home paperwork every night. If I were not here, I would be doing paperwork on behalf of some of your children right now. <laughs> and then to say, and come in the evening and tell me good things. Right. I'm tired. I'm unrelentingly tired of my job because of the amount it takes. And then to say to come here, I'm giving up my Saturday where I would be on my couch doing paperwork. And then to say, well, spend more time. That's what I want from you. I want a recognition of how much effort and time and money we spend in our job other than <laughs> the amount of time I spend with children. And as, a, as an educator myself, I see that. I mean, I get, she emailed me on a snow day. She did not have to do that. And I mean, it was at 7.40, which is my beginning <laughs> time. And I which I, which and, I, and that's so fine because much. it has to be done, but right. it's, and I I'm not going to so very much. So very much is that I appreciate it as a parent. So thank you for everything that you do. But is there, would it be appropriate for us to have maybe, you know, we've got these liaisons, would it be appropriate for us to maybe pop into an executive mm -hmm. meeting occasionally, like once a quarter, once a, what, I don't want to intrude. That's, I think there's a fine line between us being intrusive and us being in your space. Um, but also, like, just a liaison to say, hey, this, this, is, this is what's going on. The union has these concerns. We bring it back to the board and say, hey, this is what's going on, you know, would that help, would that hurt? I don't, you know, I'm in not our, sure. Right? In our previous meeting, we were discussing, like, restructuring mm -hmm. our meetings, and I think that that is something that could definitely be worked Absolutely. into that idea of, um, the, it, however we restructure it, okay. um, making it more, I mean, we're looking at, <laughs> this is a model, actually, because we don't have, I mean, we allow people to show up, but we don't necessarily announce it, and they don't always show up, but having a more public forum um, is kind of what we've talked about. For your union members or for the community? Uh, for teachers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like the whole community. Right. No, not the community, but more than just members. So opening it up yeah, to, to any teacher. Any teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, again, building on the structures that we already have, you know, and until we can find ways to expand those structures or come up with new ones. I mean, I think we've already talked more and varied presentations from. SEA, right? During the time that we have to talk, we appreciate this opportunity very much. It would be great if over the summer before decisions are in place and we're cleaning our classrooms and gearing up for, you know, new, a new batch of students to also be able to have conversations about what we're going to do for the next school year, right? Um, the other thing is there are some other communication systems and places our building administrators are very much aware of how teachers are thinking and feeling and what they are doing, and they communicate that to Dr. Kozad. So when Dr. Kozad shares things, believe him, you know. Um, when Mark comes up and talks about how teachers are generally feeling and reacting to things, again, believe him. There, there's been a long process. Mark and Dr. Kozad talk frequently. So, you know, so there you have people who have been communicating with each other, maybe not with you. And I understand that that's part of your goal is to have more of a firsthand experience with that. But believe the communication systems that are in place, too. I mean, that could be helpful, I think, in terms of building the trust and building the respect that is part of the conversation and part of the communication process. I liked your idea, and I think it somewhat resonated here with y'all that it isn't necessarily you coming to, always to the board meeting, right? Hey, I don't make all the board meetings, as I said right. earlier. Right. So um, it cannot be convenient on a Thursday night at seven o'clock for, sure. for a variety of reasons. So it is a way. Maybe it should be somewhat of a structured, regular way that we do provide you an opportunity, not an expectation, but an opportunity. But it doesn't have to be just one way you come into us. I really like. Like your idea. So, you know, you, I know you obviously all talk about stuff that's privy to your, you know, uh, your group, but your, your organization. But that said, you can always, I think, allocate 10 minutes uh, a board member to stop by and listen, you know, whatever. So, I, I think all of us, we have, I mean, Heidi, we would welcome that. We'd love to do that. You know? And I think it getting us like just going and sitting in maybe a PD when you guys are all together anyway, 
just so we can say, hey, we're here. If you have anything you'd like to talk about, you know, we're here. We're just here to listen and be a part of it because I don't want it to be a you guys and then we're up here. Like we all need to be boots on the ground and helping each other and listening to you guys because you guys have the most valuable input to me. But that's just would that be acceptable at a PD day? I'm not to sit there all day long, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Yeah, let's make it a two-way street, you know. Um, and, and as our board policy that's currently in place, is it serving the best, you know, needs of our district about we can't communicate one-on-one? I mean, I don't know how, how I know I've talked to teachers one-on-one, and I never want to cut out you from, the, you know, anything. But, and I know there's proper protocols and things, but there has to be a better way not to have something so harsh in place where we feel like they feel like we can't talk to them and we feel like we can't talk to them either. So, I think it goes back to the original intent of that though, is that like we never want to be in a position where an individual teacher is coming to us and complaining about the right principle. Like, that's, yeah. if we're talking about bigger picture, right, district wide things, and yes, like, because I'd be involved in those conversations too, but if we're just talking about, hey, this is what we're seeing from kids lately, right? Like that shouldn't be privileged. Like that helps us color our the decisions that we make. Like that's just us hearing like what is life in the classroom. Like how is Bellworth changing? You're seeing, you know, how are the kids today different than the kids five years ago or two years ago? Those are the kind of conversations that would really help us. Um, and. And to your point about believing, um, I, I think there might be a misconception that we don't believe. Because just because we don't act in the way that that uh, druthers came to us, that the teachers want this, that doesn't mean we didn't believe that the teachers want that. It's that we have a, a number of different stakeholders pulling us in different directions. and. I can totally feel the emotion coming from you and the frustration and the, and believe me when I say that there have been times when, like, I, I speak for myself, but I think we've all been there. Like, there have been times in this position where I haven't slept for days. I lost seven pounds in one week. I don't recommend it. I put it all back on. <laughs> but, like, we believe and the problem is sometimes we believe that like, God, I know that this is teachers are gonna hate us, but I know that I feel in my heart that this is the right thing to do. And I feel that like and I heard that from these doctors that said this and these doctors that said that, and I don't know how to decide between the two. Like those decisions that are so controversial and like that incite so much emotion. I I feel like at times when you're standing up there, it, it, it feels like you think we made them just because that's what we were gonna do and we're like political hacks and we do whatever Glenn Beck tells us to do or whatever. And like, I don't know how to make people see that. It, I, you might totally disagree with my position, but please believe I thought about it and prayed about it and didn't sleep about it and churned over it so much. Um, that it, it isn't that we're not believing or that we're not taking your perspective into consideration. There are just a lot of perspectives. And I think that goes back to the communication. Yeah. Because when that's not communicated, then assumptions are made, right? Yeah, like, well, and, but do my best to communicate. Right, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in terms of what we're talking about that we want collectively, we want that communication and those relationships there so we can say, hey, listen, guys, like we get it. You know, you're the ones in the buildings. You're the ones that are around these germs day in and day out. You're the ones that have family members at home that, you know, are vulnerable. Like, I mean, there was a lot of, that's, that was a lot of emotion. When you're trying to, you know, and, and people died. Like, people died from germs in that building. So that, there is emotion, you know. So that piece of it, that, that time was hard on everybody, regardless of how you felt or what advice you were taking from you whatever. Like that was just, 
it impacted all of us on every and it continues to. I mean, let's be honest, we're seeing the effects of that, and we'll see the effects of that for a very long time. And a lot of these issues were very divisive in the nation, not just right, right, right. So, and it was hard, I think, for a lot of us because you work in Bellbrook, but different communities right around us handle things so differently, and that right. becomes part of that too because someone's working here that we know that everyone's wearing masks or they're going part time, and then we were here at school, but not to like go back into that as much. Um, one issue that Dr. Kozad and I talked about prior to this meeting, which we discussed, is how can we like move past disagreements, such as right, that. Right. Like, mm -hmm. We didn't necessarily agree with the decision, but ultimately it was your decision to make, and we have to respect that. And how do we just move past it and to continue our positive relationship in terms of the goals that Mrs. Marsh brought up at the end? Because ultimately it is about the students, preparing them for life after the school, being good citizens, being ready for the workforce, being ready for college, whatever it may be. Problem solvers. So. For us. <laughs> yeah, and I think that. You know, in a lot of ways, relationship building is a key component. It's difficult to do to a certain extent. But, you know, I found volunteering was a, was a way that I really got a chance to just chat and have a relationship to know that, so that. People would know my intentions are good, even though you don't disagree. You know, you may disagree with them. Um, we need subs. I heard you're retired. Yeah. 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 We're not allowed to be employed. We're not allowed to walk right into that. Volunteer subs. 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 Volunteer just be there and help you empty trash and move chairs. There you go. Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. So I just, I mean, because yeah. that gives, gives us, I mean, we have to think of creative ways to be able to right. establish and a relationship. Right. Yeah. 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 It's probably both ways. But. For sure. Yeah, I think about a year ago, we all had a discussion in one of the rooms during one of these meetings and talked about, okay, I, I think step number one might be, you know, being present and being available and going to all the different events, both school events and community events, the sports and the theater and the band and, and everything, and just being there. Um, I love, you know, disagree, that's totally fine. I feel like maybe we've done a little bit of that, so I'm really excited that now maybe, okay, well, I don't know if that's an easy thing or what, but what, what's next? How, how can we grow that? How can we move on to step two and actually start making some of these connections rather than just showing up and passing out the PTO things or okay. you know we I think I think we've improved that along with um, you know maybe a certain number of years ago board meetings were ten minutes long and it was yay, 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 and that was it. And I know I think everybody's spoken to the importance of really talking things out, discussing, debating amongst each other. And it isn't fun to have those eight hour meetings, but we've had a lot of them just because again that's kind of the only way we can communicate. So we want to make sure that at least um, everybody's aware of kind of the thoughts in us. But all that to say, like if that was kind of step one, I, I think it's time we try harder and we try to figure out our own vision, but we try to figure out what step two and step three is. Right. And then I think we have done a very, I mean, a, a bad job. We need to do a better job communicating with the teachers like after a major decision and saying, hey, and have it there at the beginning of the day and say, this is from the board. So you can read the intentions and you know why we maybe made a decision and we need to close that gap a little bit better in communicating. If there is something that's, even that's hard. Yeah. Because for us to say this has to be on the board, we can sit here and do it. Like, <laughs> but we can't go like work on it and right. then but yeah. talk about it because then we're, but right. if we're in is, trouble. Right. <laughs> but if it makes a difference in their their day and their the way they perceive a topic, then you know. Yeah, because if nothing is communicated, then right. you sit there and you make right. up your own assumptions. You make up your own assumptions, <laughs> and then the narrative gets right. yeah, just, just human nature. The yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, and that we, what we learned at the OSBA conference, tell it first, tell it fast, so you can control. Like, if we want a message out there, we're responsible for doing that. You know, we have to make sure that, and bringing them in in advance if we can, if it's possible, bringing, get, bring the teacher input to the table so that we know what that is. I think that's a really good point because oftentimes I find things out as a parent before I find them out as a teacher. Right. And that's really strange. It is. But we do too. Mm -hmm. We do that as a parent. Yeah. Right. 
and, and so that's a pro- like I'm not a support member. I don't need to know everything. Like you know, it's not particular to something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we don't know. Like, maybe you think we know more than we do. Not that we're not that we're ever being kept in the dark, but like. We hired Dr. Cosette, we hired the building administrators to run the district, and so there might be things that you're mad at us about that we have nothing to do with. Right. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time somebody would be like, hey, what, what's the progress on the thing? I'd be like, well, did you watch the meeting three weeks ago? I was like, well, well no. I was like, well, we're, we're allowed to talk again in three weeks, so there hasn't been a lot of progress on the thing until we get to the meeting. But I think, you know, we shouldn't lose sight. Let's push back and take a look. This district, by every measure, excels. Okay? Excels because of the teachers. Mm-hmm. But also, it, it doesn't excel in spite of the board. You know, the board is not adversarial in everything we do to try to undermine and destroy this educational system here. We wring our hands and we, again, it's no longer five-minute meetings. Um, we've got, you know, hours, often hours of meetings with, in this case, most of us have kids in the school system, you know, so we, we have a vested interest in it. So, but what I'm looking at is, let's just stop. There's absolutely room for improvement. I'm not trying to, by any means to diminish that. I will readily acknowledge we have areas we seriously need to work on. At the same time, though, it's not lose track. We're doing well you know, as a district. And, uh, so it's a team effort, and, and it's, it's taken a team effort to get it to that, you know. So. Right, and Mr. Kerr, if we can get some like actionable steps, like I was saying, like what do you need from us? Like what what do you see that relationship being? What do you what would you like? You know, because we can we know what we we would love to just you know be you know have that relationship, but we want to make I want to make sure that we're cognizant of what you guys need and what you want. Think, some actionable steps that we can as a board do, or suggestions. I think know? many of the suggestions you brought up here today are actionable. Maybe we can offer you. Opportunities for you to attend our meetings. Right, and he um, talked about how to make an informal thing. I don't know. We, I think dodgeball might be appropriate. <laughs> 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 we, we had discussed that, and the OEA does offer opportunities for like grants that would help that, but we have to have specific plans in place. Um, we can't just, hey, we're thinking about this idea. Right. Right. It's more like this is what we would like to do. Right. And I definitely don't want to add team building event meetings. Right. Or yeah. you know, different districts do different things, but you know, well, there at the are end of the year barbecue where the right. person serves mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, um, there are districts know. that do a happy yeah. hour, there are districts that do a barbecue, there are districts that do a variety of things. Like Nickel one seconds to have a pickleball board. <laughs> 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 well, <that's And>, <laughs> happy hour with dodgeball. <laughs> you know, I've often, I was wondering though. Uh, many times you're you have liaisons to different committees. Have you ever thought about having a liaison to a building, or is that not something that would be appropriate? Like if you had this person is the liaison to BCI, and yeah. you are frequently and, and people are just kind of used to seeing you. Because part of it, I think, is that like a lot of teachers probably don't know you, so they yeah. see you in the building and they don't even know who you are. Well, I, th- I find that even with the you know the staff, I come in and it's like, right. I'm here to go visit your class or whatever. And they're like, who are you? It's like, yeah, I don't remember. You know, it's like, right. here's my badge. Oh, we got to do a background check on you. Well, no, <laughs> it's bad. You know? and so yeah, it's clear at times. They, so that's actually I think a wonderful idea. And then you can rotate it over every you know for those yeah. who've been in the board for years, they could rotate it each year, go to different schools. So. Because I don't think that's a fact. So, if you're yeah, you concerned about that, yeah. that yeah. Yeah. like, is that, is that too, like, we, getting in We used telling? to do that, right? I didn't know. That. Oh, we, we didn't used to do, do that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how formal it was. It was like, uh, you know, we'd have probably at the organizational meeting, I'm not sure exactly when, but, uh, you know, to say, who wants to take uh, Bell Creek? And someone would say, well, you know, maybe I have a connection there. I have a child or grandchild who goes there. <laughs> I'll take the building. You know, you adopt, adopt the building, so to speak, and you try to get to the events when you can in that building. Mm-hmm. That was the idea at that time, at least. So. But is, is that something we could? I mean, it's definitely something to open and look at. I think it would be the what would be the the like is the purpose to maybe just you know the main purpose would be getting to the after school events at that building a little bit more and trying to get more connection there. Obviously, there's going to be really top heavy at the high school. 
compared to Stephen Bell after school mm -hmm. events. Right. Um, more but if we're, if we're trying to make connections yeah. to staff, yeah. after school yeah. events are not going yeah. to be where it's at. It needs to be right. during, like, <laughs> maybe we show up and we cover a lunch duty so you can go to something else. You know, sure. like, those kind of things. If, if we, I just don't want to, I don't want to be in your space. I want to respect your space. But also, if I'm not there to help or they're getting FaceTime, then, you know, but I think teachers, are gonna help. teachers would like that. I don't think they would think it's intrusive because I, I don't know this, but I think a lot of teachers think, well, the board has no idea what our life is like. Right. And then if they see people, right. board members at the school, they're like, oh, well, they do know because they, I've seen them here. And, I, think, I mean, I don't know. That. Uh, well, I mean, just from we both teach fourth grade together. I'd be happy for any of you to come into my classroom. <laughs> if you would like to read to the kids, Bell Creek is having family literacy night March 2nd from five to seven. We need guest readers. <laughs> I will take <laughs> anything. <laughs> yes. I got him do that. I leave you, but I will say, if we did the, uh, PTO conference, I think, and I sat in Bell Creek in the, in the teacher's lounge, hoping to talk to people, you know, giving out the platform and just, Hanging out, it was the quietest that teachers lounge has ever. Been. I know you all are in there being super when was silent. It? When was it? All during last year. All during. Oh, okay. I, 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 I very much felt like the fact that I was there. It was like everyone just came in. No. Down the hall and talked about their their business. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like. I was trying to do something nice, yeah. but I ruined their lunch. No. <laughs> no. But, but I would say that that's part of the process. Right. Because right. Right. Yeah. last year, maybe there were teachers that did not feel yeah. as fondly of you just because of your position. Right. And so to kind of improve. the only time you did it, right? Or had so that relationship. Yeah. Well, that's Donnie's been coming in. And the kids are like, Mr. Phil. And he's like, pretend I'm not here. And he's like, I want to get to the point where it's just natural, maybe in that space that they don't even right. respond, mm -hmm. right? Like they are used, they're so used to seeing it. But like the first couple times, yeah. it's gonna be like, you know, whatever. I think they thought I was there to spy. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff was going on in some other districts where board members were like, just crashing the party and being, trying to catch people doing bad things. And, right. And whatever. Um, right. Well, but I, I really would like to visit classes. It's never, please understand if I ever do one of your classes, it is sub-zero interest in trying to find anything wrong or poke at. I love the school environment. I just it's love walking. Energy. I it's love really walking through the hallways. I love seeing those kids smiling or diligently working on their math problems or whatever. And so I would like to visit classes just because I, I want to be a high school student again. You know? <laughs> and I want to learn chemistry. I want to learn you know calculus or whatever. I just have always had a, just an intense interest in learning and so I, I love the school environment, and I think by periodically going, you know, at least that also shows the teachers that there's an interest, you know. But I know at the same time, I know there's you know, administrative and supervisory concerns about just kind of wandering the school and just going in whatever. So I don't there's think some safety can... committee I hear. <laughs> 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 like a safety yeah, committee, making sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if it's a very specific thing, just to, oh, yeah. like, like you go in, and, and I know there's been other board members prayers class that debate federal anti federal so you're there for a very specific <laughs> thing and you're there and then because right. you never want to just and go and pop into a around like, yeah. you're, you're there for specific right. purposes you're there reading to kids yeah. you're there for shark volunteering tank for lunch for this yeah we did shark tank class yeah. shark tank i think yeah. those those Finding specific those things would be yeah. much more probably right. well received if you're there for a specific thing you're not just Roaming right. around, peeking in the room, you know that. Yeah, kind of, yeah, you're there for a specific thing, and right. then you're then you're gone. That we said, think that would fill. That said, with certain teachers, I know them and I'm comfortable with them. Right. I would like to just visit their class, and they know I'm not there to like you know sniff things out or whatever. I'd like to just go to a regular class every now and then and just sit there and not say anything. Just and I'm not going to walk out with those like or whatever. So I wouldn't really want to just limit it to a special event, although I'm very no, not necessarily a special event, but you're there for a specific right. purpose. Or you're if you guys know that you have something special going on and you want to show off. Like, and, and we could try to do our best to encourage teachers maybe to yeah. extend yeah. invitations to yeah. you for, but you're right. I understand the idea of just being in a class where it's kind of not very formal, but most teachers would probably prefer to have like, Notice. they're oh. going to have just like, <laughs> you know, something they're going to do. Yeah. Like, right. Like, so a lot of times we want to observe the students more than as like not an observation in the way that you all think of as an observation, but like I want to I want to see what are the kids in this district like now. What is it? You know what? 
Have you ever thought about setting up the conversations with like a, a group of high school students or middle school students to get their perspectives too? Of like, right. they, I mean, I think they're stakeholders in this just as much. Mm -hmm. A lot of some districts have like yeah. student advisory to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So like, like a student I think that would be something too. That's a great idea. Yeah. Think about. That's it. They, they have a lot of insight. That because I guess <laughs> it's a great opportunity just to complain, right? So they could like do this mm -hmm. right. You know, it's like, well, we're going to store up all these things that we don't like, we're going to dump it on a school board meeting or whatever. So maybe that, but I'm not averse at all to interfacing with the students. Again, as I just demonstrated my interest in that. I know we're still to build that, like, Well, like student council, right? Yeah. If you had a, like, I mean, that's probably a better example. Rather than having them come talk to us about what they don't like here at the school board meetings, if we, and they could do that too, I'm not trying to exclude that, but maybe when they have a student council meeting, and every now and then there's a board meeting member that's there. You know, it's a more formalized structure, and then they know the board members come in, but then they can talk, you know, and just. Uh, well, like Mary Kay said at the beginning, there's a lot of purposes for communication. Like, mm -hmm. that communication could just be listening. Like, what is life like in a high school building mm -hmm. in Bellbrook? Yeah. What is life like in a middle school? Because, you know, just driving in the car with my kids who are a middle schooler and a high schooler, I learn all kinds of things that I'm like, wait a second, what's happening? You know, like, you may not know that or have that insight yet or realize, you know, a kid has in a three-day setting seven tests, you know, and you're sitting there going, how is that even manageable? Like, how do you, you know, how do you have to perform at this high level over, so even just being aware of what their life is like and how we can make that system work better, as you know, I don't know. Yeah, and I think if there are particular themes that you guys have, like if, again, if one of your focuses, what is everyday life really like, right? Or if it's how do you go about lesson planning? Like any of those things that if you communicate to Dr. Kosad that that's a particular interest that you as a board have, we can certainly figure out how to do that. And maybe, again, you take that and you talk to one board member, talks to people at Stephen Bell about their lesson planning process, or mental health issues at, at Stephen Bell or whatever the issue is, somebody else takes Bell Creek, somebody else takes mm -hmm. the middle school, somebody else, or even like a pair takes the high school because the high school's bigger. So I would think that a pair would probably be necessary for the high school. But um, but yeah, but so if there's particular issues and you relay those, we, we can make those things happen, right? We can find ways for you guys to have, again, those first-hand knowledge and conversations with with people. You know, I don't think teachers are, are opposed to that at all. And I think, again, with administrative support, we can make that happen. That sounds great. And I mean, anything, any ideas of anything we can do to try to just make your life better. I, I mean, I know in my day job, I wear three, four, five different hats. I have some sense in being in buildings and talking to folks, but I'm sure I have no idea the 15, 20 hats that every single teacher has to wear. It just seems like every day, like a, a new form, a new thing to fill out, a new thing to report, a new whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like, you know, educator, counselor, sometimes mom or dad giving medical advice. Like, I, I don't know. So this is me prefacing later on. We have like a thing about school board goals, and I totally get it. You guys are probably going to bug out of here. I would too. So <laughs> <laughs> prefacing this, and I don't even have like super any ideas. This is like not even half baked. It's pre baked. But any ideas that you have, if there's any way we can like help take a half off of you, so you can focus on educating. Like I am so personally interested. Um, yeah, and I think we need to do a better job, like as a board, like appreciating and saying thank you to you more often, and just like you know, I think we need to do a better job of that. But we also need not just words; we need a tangible thing because you know it's great to see. Thanks for working so hard. Thanks for giving up your Saturday. Thanks for doing all this. But like, can we like give them a tangible, like take something off, make their job easier, streamline something, listen to their ideas about streamlining processes that might might be helpful to them. Something I just trying to recap here because I've got a list here I'm trying to <laughs> but just so that we're you know at the end of the meeting just want we're getting that we're getting maybe close to this end of the section or so. Um, but just so I'm hearing things. So 
what I'm hearing here is some more opportunities, board members going into buildings of maybe again, specific kind of things. And again, maybe those that can expand over time a little bit, but going into read the kids, volunteer at lunch or um, those kind of, of things to, to get to better know what's going on in our buildings. Math pentathlon every other Tuesday is the highlight of oh, the awesome. <laughs> best thing. Those are, those are fun games. Um, but also um, setting up some times with, with the union uh, at your executive session meeting or executive board meetings that a uh, board member and myself can, can maybe come visit those those meetings and then maybe maybe Mark and I or, or maybe just the executive committee of, of meeting at other times throughout the year. I know we meet periodically, just you and me. Um, but just trying to get those informal conversations, obviously the whole board can't meet at that executive committee but maybe a couple board members um, and then maybe also some some questions that um, maybe you can ask your members on a, on a whatever basis that aren't after an event or something so that we can maybe track hey there's these these things are this is getting better or no this is getting not so it's getting worse and so that we can track those kind of things and maybe that could be more information you could share with us on a regular basis the board on a regular basis so it's not after an event and it's like over time you can kind of see what what kind of the thoughts are and maybe it's at other maybe it's in the summer maybe it's at times that where there's not a high maybe less of a stress level and throughout the year a little bit so maybe we can work out some of those um, things and then also uh, again uh, SEA and SLAS have an opportunity to talk at the board meeting. Maybe we can work together to highlight other things that are going on in the district from the teacher perspective and not just maybe a, a I don't want to say negative, but a, a you know, contentious kind of thing. Maybe there's other things that can be shared during that time that are just teacher centric <coughs> rather than or teacher celebration rather than than make some kind of negative opinions or feedback on something. Those are some of the thoughts that I have. Too, though, so. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, is there other, am I, did I, am I hearing things correctly? I'm just trying to see what. I like, I really like the idea that Square had about liaison with the buildings. You don't want to put that Liaison with the yep. yeah. oh, I like that idea too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then at a staff meeting or something, we can be like, oh, this is Dorian's yeah. our liaison. You know, like just so then everybody's aware of what. She's point person. Yeah. She's, yeah. 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 Or whoever it is. I know. Yeah. 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 Just being familiar with the building, literally. For one year, I'm going to be at that building periodically, just dropping by, whatever, not necessarily wandering the halls or whatever, but having communication with the principal. If there's a teacher's meeting, go to that and yeah. just. And it's, it's a recognized face that's recurrently there. And that's how you find all the other wall doesn't need to be painted, you know, or, you know, who knows what. And if you're the liaison, you could just pop into those classes that you're yeah. yeah, that'd be. That'd be so I, I really like the rest of the person do something like that. That's a great idea. Everyone thought of it. I would like to do that too. Yeah. There's more opportunities at PD days. To, uh, I think that was another thing that had written down. Mm -hmm. so more service opportunities for the board to serve the teachers. Mm -hmm. and, or maybe those relationships. I remember saying, I think maybe a helpful way to structure maybe some of those comments you bring to us is talk about other, like we heard that this other district is doing this and this is why we like it or this is why we don't like it. If you're considering doing that here, like that kind of stuff might be helpful and it's, it's not contentious. It helps both parties. Like, hey, we heard that Kettering just decided to start doing this. Please don't do that here. Like, <laughs> give us a heads up. Or we heard that they did. That sounds like a really cool idea. What's the chance we could do that here? Um, because you're right. Like, it, the world is so contentious right now. And it feels like a yes. lot of that has come down to, like, man, like school boards. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, what I was alluding to earlier right, when I talked about the school board. Right? Even school board job being more difficult. It, it, it's not just school board. Again, teachers have been asked to do unprecedented things, mm -hmm. and the board has been made to make unprecedented decisions, which has made it a difficult, more difficult job, I think, than it's probably ever been. You know, the state literally is, is not making decisions anymore, and they're dumping it on the school board. I mean, it, it's it's a ripe recipe for civil distress, you know, and 
So there's, and that's what I was trying to allude to, the difference between military service and school. My wife really supported that, but the, the stuff with the board sometimes gets pretty challenging because it's not normal, you know, what's been going on for the last three or four years, not only in this district, other than maybe the financial side of it, but, um, but nationwide it gets indicative. You know? So the boards, you know, the board, everybody, administrators, teachers, staff, students, but I think that's why when that safety committee was formed, that did feel so like, what? Like, we haven't heard a word about this. We haven't, like, we're the ones that are, you're asking me, I mean, what the secure as the buildings are, the threat's going to come from the inside, like, to shoot a student? Like, that's where my mind, I'm like, and I wasn't consulted, I wasn't, I mean, no one was brought into the conversation. And, and then it's like, time out. Like, your biggest stakeholders who are going to be the ones, and, and so that's when I think the, the reaction comes, right? Like, sure. like it's like, holy, you know, that's a big deal. So, you know, I love the conversation that's happened, but like, we do have to make sure, like, when big decisions like that, that teachers are in that, in those conversations, when it's going to directly affect, mm -hmm. I mean, that's who you're asking to do the stuff. Like, we should have some feedback on some level. But then I think there also has to be a shared understanding of we do that, we get all the feedback, and then if we go the different way than what you all wanted, agree, agree. like we all have to go together. But it's, it's um, the fact that I know as a teacher, it's, it's just the fact that you took that step to ask. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. and, and you may not, like you made the decision without having maybe a piece that you're like, oh my gosh, I never, just like you said, have somebody that like has that different viewpoint to say, you haven't thought about this implication, or you haven't thought about that implication, or or consider it from this viewpoint, and then you're like, you're right. Like, I mean, I sat in that meeting where you know the experts got up, and there were a lot of people that talked at that meeting, and there were all kind. I mean, I was sitting there, I was like, that's a good point. That's a good point from all sides of it, right? Trying to figure out what, what how do I feel? I was sitting next to a former parent who was a police officer. She got up and spoke about her son who was in my classroom. Like, I know. We're all coming from a place of caring about kids. We're all coming about from a place of safety. But when you're in that space, I mean, I sit there and those lockdown drills and tears are rolling out of my eyes. It's just a practice, but like that's our reality. And to know that, like I think of my kids at the middle school and it, there was just a threat at the middle school. Like I thought, do I send her money? I mean, it's constantly in our minds. It's constantly a fear we have both as teachers, both as parents, you guys too. We're all we're all about safety. We're not saying we don't want guns in the school though. You know, we're just saying think about the implications that then this is putting on whoever that is, whoever that person is, that you're saying if a threat is a student, I'm gonna use this gun to I mean that like in my mind, I can't wrap myself around. I cannot get that. Can I interject to a point where we felt heard just as a side note, just to kind of Sure, sure. Um, Last year, uh, Dr. Cosette had to bring in the SCA and, the, and SLASP to discuss how the funds, the federal funds were gonna be spent. And I don't know what the perception was, what we were gonna come in with, but we as a group came in and we said, there's a need for a few more teachers at the elementary level. Um, and that is the direction we wound up going. And obviously, you know, Dr. Cosette yeah, could have gone a yeah. different direction, but it has made a huge we definitely impact. felt heard because we recognized what was needed. Like we didn't say we need more teachers, like for my building. Right. It was at those lower levels because we consider ourselves to be pretty knowledgeable about what we're doing here. And we felt like that was the best way to spend some of that money. And that's the direction we went. And it's been effective. I think it's been helpful for some yes. people. Yes, very much. Yes, very much. We were very yeah. appreciative to get that last year. Well, I'll say that that was a very difficult decision. Just based on the numbers, but man, was that an easy decision. I don't even think there was any discussion. It was like, oh man, yeah, teachers need that. that. Like, yeah, you know, absolutely, next. <laughs> so I'm glad we could come together on that. So good, there were some good good things with the point. And maybe we should be better about sharing the book. I and mean, maybe that's what this you know, comes down to too, where we're right. having these conversations and then it's like, thank you for hearing us on this. but. Yeah, I mean, conversations have to be there in order to have that back and forth. And I don't have to say to you, I think I'll speak personally yeah. for myself. We all we get we get the, the next whatever the next big thing is. 
Oh, you just jinxed us. There's going to be murder hornets. There's going to be murder hornets are coming. Do you have a We bring everybody in, we get all the opinions, we talk it all through. I think the, the safety that we need to feel is if we ultimately have to go a different way than what we don't want, the next meeting isn't you ignored us. We told you what we want and you ignored us. You like, because it has to go, it has to go, that safety has to go both ways. And it has to be kind of like, hey, well, we're just all talking things out and like, maybe I'm just shooting from the hip and maybe something I said was stupid or something. Like we're, we're, we're churning, we're in the churn, you know, what the military calls making the sausage, right? So, <laughs> like, um, like that it doesn't all become a big thing before it's even a thing. Like it doesn't right. all become the rumor mill or it doesn't, we're not mounting the, the, the response or the, um, it, it does need to be a collaborative effort. And it, and it, it won't always go process. the way that like the teachers or the union wants. And right, that's what Dr. Gazette and I talked about. That's one of the purposes in terms of what this meeting hopefully is, is this idea that we're not always going to agree, but we still have to hopefully work together, realistically, for the betterment of the district and the students. And um, realistically, some of the decisions in the past, um, and I don't want to rehash all that, but some of them, there wasn't even teacher input. So to like, it is easy to make the decisions and say, well, if we had consulted the teachers, they may have disagreed, and so it's better, I guess, maybe just to cut that part out of it because it ultimately is your decision. But on that same token, uh, I think there had to be, I mean, I think everyone recognized that there was gonna be some pushback to some of these decisions, no matter what you, decision you made. Yeah. There were gonna be people that were going to be unhappy, so. Well, and part of our commitment to our job is doing things that other people decide we are going to do, right? right? Like, we have to do that fun fact, <laughs> we do that all the time, you know, so. You know, so so just because there may be some sort of personal perspective that's different or, you know, some sort of, you know, unpleasant feelings or whatever, that doesn't mean we are not going to do the thing and do it to our very best ability. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I actually, I'm, the year I taught masks, that was, that was a good year. Like, I was really close to those kids. I mean, we had a good year that year, and they were all on masks. And it was fine. Like, I I did what I needed to do, right? It worked, right? So we're going to make whatever is happening work for the students. That's what we are committed to doing. Uh, two things. Um, one, I'd like to say that I, I always want to give you the benefit of the doubt, you know, but you make a perspective of what we make a perspective to say, all right, let let me think the best of them in, under those circumstances, and I hope that you can do that for us. Um, and the second thing is, uh, Mrs. Smith, send me the information about March 2nd. Okay. I'd love, I'd love to come. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. It's really good at telling stories about the book. Yeah, no, it's really, it's really, are you here for church setup? We are. Could we just finish this one brief thing? I, I think we're probably getting good. Then we could take a recess here in just a minute. Perfect. Is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Thank appreciate you. appreciate well, it. Appreciate it. Again, really, genuinely, deeply grateful for y'all coming out, especially in such a number and with such well thought out uh, perspectives. And uh, let's work together. And we appreciate the yeah, opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And everything you do. I mean, we know this is not your full-time job. We know this is a lot of extra. My dad was a school board member in the community I grew up in. And I know he was getting phone calls at 11 o'clock at night with community members questioning their decisions. So I know that piece of it. And well, community I know it can get better. Where, where was your dad? In London. Oh, very London. Good. Just outside of Columbus. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. And how would say being a school board in 2023, 2022 is very different from For sure. <laughs> 2016, 2017 when I started. <laughs> a lot's I was, happened. <laughs> I only came to meetings where I was like somehow recognized or athletes were recognized. I never came to meetings. <laughs> so you're right, everything changed. Yeah. yeah.
but we can change with it and we can yeah. continue to grow and, and that's what we do we adjust we adapt we every single day every <laughs> single day yeah. and i know from me from my perspective i appreciate everything that each and every one of you do and it's you know make sure the staff knows that you know that we i am genuinely appreciative of everything we do you guys have great teachers, teachers in your building so you can feel confident in that i've been in two now yeah. <laughs> you have amazing teachers yeah. and dedicated staff parents oh my gosh mm -hmm. You know, I can continue to put some of the thoughts together and then work with you guys. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to hang out. Thanks. Have a good rest of your Saturday. Thank you. Well, real quick, uh, I'd like to make a motion to go into like a 10 minute recess. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Mr. Lyman, please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sanderson? Yes. Clear and recess. Let me be honest. I was going to say, parliamentary on the technical.
Thank you to the folks across now. Yep. Okay, I will now call us back to order. Oh, we're Kevin. Stand by. Stand by. Are we still muted? Are we off? No. We are unmuted. These muffins are really good. When Kevin gets back, our next topic will be Board of Education goals. I'm going to go ahead and find each 30 minute uh, topic and try to keep us on task. So, okay. You know, I'm just seeing my. Are you trying to stay? You don't want to stay here? No, I'm not. I've always seen my plan. I might want to narrow it down a little bit um, in 30 minutes just because we use about an hour for the, the union leadership. Okay, um, we have a few more things in our work session section, a few more topics. Maybe we can try to keep it to like 20 minutes ish, unless for some reason we really need to keep going. Um, next is Board of Education goals. Uh, let's see where this goes. It's my understanding, I'm not sure how far back, but I, I, every year, obviously, there are goals given to the superintendent and the treasurer, um, which I think collectively we're thinking might be a good idea. I don't think this has happened in the past. For the first time, let's set some actual Board of Education goals for us. So we can now discuss that. Well, I, I think the obvious one is uh, the communication, certainly with uh, the unions, that um, we just had a lengthy discussion about. But that certainly is one where um, it would be nice if we kind of had some benchmark as to where the where the perception is on where we are with uh, those, our communication with them, and then have, toward the end of the year, um, do a check in to see that people feel as if we've, you know, we've made progress there too. Sometimes things that are subjective are hard to it evaluate, is. but certainly. Sometimes those are the most important things to try to tackle. Right, it's right. <laughs> Interesting dichotomy. <clears throat> um, also, I mean, communication with our community. Yeah. Um, reaching out to our community is certainly um, <clears throat> more, I think, financially, we need to be um, sharing with them information so that, A, when we get to the point, at some point in the future, hopefully, late in the future, that we're needing to pass the levy, that we all, you know, we don't get the response. Well, you know, never told us anything you know, what's going on. Right. That's one of the pushbacks we got in 2019 is we hadn't communicated well what our financial needs. So, <clears throat> not strictly financially, obviously, but you know, somehow to improve our communication with the community. You know, that, that's an interesting point. So I think several of us, all of us, have made a concerted effort to. You know, attending Chamber of Commerce meetings yeah. by Bellbrook for Bellbrook, Optimist Club sometimes. So, so some of those community types mm -hmm. of things, um, primarily, kind of as I said earlier, is like step number one is just being present, being visible, mm -hmm. available to answer questions. Um, maybe there's a way to go to step two and actually, mm -hmm. yeah, move again beyond just presence. I think significant progress has been made there, but never perfect, right? So we can still do it. I feel like you're, there is a distinction and, well, 
there are two areas, at least two areas we need to communicate in. Just yeah, with our teachers union, you know, school staff, but also with our community. We always need to be cognizant of that. Are we, are we, how are we communicating with the community? I think it really helped that we hired the communications coordinator, uh, um, Henry, and uh, so you know, our there is this verbose or what's the word I'm looking for here? A lot of communication is constantly going out, you know, uh, to the community. Uh, right. It's a lot of us talking to them. There's not a whole lot of opportunities for well, them that's to talk true. to us. Yeah. So if we could figure out a way, maybe a community chat, I know what happened with those, maybe revisit some of those or a town hall type meeting. Yeah, I agree. Because that's one of the things I brought up in times past that I, I continue to be express frustration at what we read at the beginning of our, of our, of our board meetings. Yeah, I'm sorry, I know, I know I frequently would turn to you and say, okay, this is not a public meeting, blah, 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 blah. When's when right. it going to be one? You know? right. so, and so, but, but what the nature of one, I think we really need to and, determine. Right, yeah. So we've talked about this before, though. I thought, I wouldn't say we settled it, but that's when we went to this model. Because we, we did one, no one came. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and I, I think there's a, a segment, I'm just going to be very frank, there's a segment of people who aren't there to talk to us. They went to Grandstand to be heard by everyone else. That They went that forum. Mm -hmm. That's not helpful, really. And I think we're all, well, so when we did the one, and, but we were all in separate rooms, yeah. so that we were trying to talk to specific segments of our constituency or our parents or our population and each room had two people or three people that came representing you know, out of all the middle school parents two people came um, and so that's when we decided like well, maybe that isn't that forum that isn't appealing to people maybe a forum that is maybe just being more a little bit of everywhere being where people already are because people don't want to spend their evening coming to right. the thing <laughs> let's go to where the people are and try to be more present right and so I, I think we've done that a great job of doing that in district but i don't feel like there's been a whole, whole lot of agreement outside of the district so and even within district though i think we're there but there's nothing that signifies that we're there like that works right. People don't want to just bother us if we're just there to see the show or see the watch the band concert. Like we need to have something that makes it a little bit more like formal. Lucy's right. like advice, like come to our booth or something. Something that signifies, hey, there's board members over here that we're here to chat. If if anybody wants to come up and talk, like because otherwise it just becomes awkward and people don't necessarily know who we are and we're wearing a little name tag that most people don't see and. And we haven't all been as diligent, like some of us are more diligent than others about being there. Um, so I, I think trying to definitely have someone at every open house and all the beginning of school year events, but making it somehow known of her ideas that we're not just there to see what's going, we're not there to observe the teachers at that open house, we're there to converse with the families who are coming to the open house and let's hear about your thoughts on things. Um, I don't know how to communicate that, how to communicate that we're there to communicate. Yeah, I know we probably want to be careful in overusing tools, but I wonder if every now and then it might be appropriate for maybe a, not because of way of your good idea, bad idea for a remind message or a Facebook post, hey, the school board will be at the thing, please, please, you know, bring your questions, Come up, shake hands, you know, I don't know, solicit that way a little bit. A couple closer. Yep. The, uh, I'm sorry, you respond. I'm just more happy to do that, yeah. Especially like the open house. Sure. So, again, I, I've been at open houses or whatever, and when you're just kind of one person wandering around with a badge and nobody can see, and they don't really, even, even again, the front office staff doesn't know I'm on the board, you know, it, it becomes awkward, you know. So, right. so I think if we're going to be at these events, um, I think honestly we should have a table that has a prominent banner, school board member, whatever, you know, and then when you stand there, people go, oh, you're the school board member, you know. So I think being very obvious, whether it's a football game or open house or whatever, that at some point we have a presence at, at a table that has a label that people cannot miss, you know, versus, is that how you're doing? Like I thought it'd be one day out 
dogging. I hear all that. Swagger Road. Right. Never dogging it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, I almost beat the horn, rolled out the window, and I was going to probably get shot because uh, you know, there's hundred guys in the car. <laughs> but uh, also, you know, there. Are, um, I think we need to be able to have a way of pointing when we get face criticism. You don't communicate with us. We need to be able to have something we can either point to. No, we were here, 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 here. But that's where I think if we had like a more formal event, like a town hall, I know there's some concerns with that, what is meeting with legal issues and talking on, on the fly and things like that. But I think if we had those kind of events, um, and just listen. You know, maybe we don't even respond. We are here to hear from you or whatever. I don't but just have a formal event once or twice a year, town hall, open house. And teachers could also be there with their displays, you know, brochures, or I don't know. It could just be a showcase of the district, you know, uh, and an opportunity for the board to hear from the community and maybe respond. I know there are concerns with the legalities of that. But I think we could do better in that area because then we can point to something that was on the schedule twice last year. We had open houses. And maybe not necessarily use our buildings, maybe use community buildings, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a church or something, you know, something that is something, community. Something. That's not the district because I know some people that don't have kids in the district don't. They're, they're hesitant to come into a building. That's a point. Why don't people come into I our get building? It, maybe just one. Your tax dollars are paying for what our kids are doing. But maybe just one, or if there's a community event, maybe we can think about having a presence there. You know, I know we talked about going into churches or through visiting visiting out in our community where you know, people are. But if we had on like more of like. A recurring basis, or at least you know, even just twice a year, like right. you do before we so it's like it's a location, you know. But it's, I kind of favor yeah. Roger's thoughts on that, but yeah. regardless, it's just like okay, well, this is not a normal board meeting this Thursday, it's right. a it's open a house, and people yeah. it is the community meeting that we never we allude to, and never do. You know, um, I do think we need to do that, but again, I'm aware of the legal concerns, especially if we're speaking off the fly on the fly. Um, maybe we just Certain areas we just don't go into, you know, uh, because we know that it's problematic, you know, for the legal perspective. So, certainly anything involves discipline with the student or, you know, legal matters or things like that. But, uh, I've been, again, beat the dead horse here, but I've, I've been interested in that, called for that yeah. since I've been on the board, and I really would like to see us do that. <laughs> and that being a formal meeting on yeah. the schedule. Frankly, in the schools, on YouTube, so we have a, a record that we actually met with the community. Well, we have we have to make it um, an official meeting. Yeah. For us all to be there, but I think we could schedule something that's, that eliminates some of the problematic to say this is a board listening night, you know, and say we're going to give everybody, you know, anybody who wants to speak until two hours is done or two and a half hours is done. And um, you know, your time slot and that kind of stuff. But to say we're, we're listening only, you know, um, if there are if there are uh, things that we need to get back to you about, we'll have designate somebody to get back to you. But we're going to listen only. We're not going to you know, just. Um, Again, we can also use it as an opportunity to showcase the district too. You know, so somebody that just won an award or whatever. So it could be you know, a, yeah. a hybrid meeting in that mm -hmm. sense. You know. So that other people may have interest in coming. Right. And so talking to her, just to respond to a couple of those. So um, I, I can definitely work on, you know, if there is a um, at open houses, that's probably just the, the easiest example, just to use as an mm -hmm. easy example of making some type of table with a sign and, and having board members at those things and making it communicated through the principal and or through mine that a hey, board member is going to be there. We can do that. That's, that's easy peasy. That's no, no problem. Yes. The town hall me meeting. Um, again, I, I'm open to that. I think it's. I think it will be a little challenging if it's not a topic. If it's just kind of a common shared thoughts. But mm -hmm. board wants to do that. Listening only. If that's what the board wants to do. We can set something up. I would say, if uh, it'd be earlier. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe spring or or in, not in the fall. Um, with um, there's a board election in the fall, I would probably try to stay away from that particular time frame. That's what it was last time, and I think that 
a little challenging, so maybe it's a spring. Maybe it ties into some feedback. I don't know if we'd have enough to a lesser or to a later point strategic plan. That'd be kind of a good place if there was opportunity for feedback about strategic plan, but we aren't at that point yet. But I think that may be a, in the future sometime of some feedback or input on, on that too would be something people can get their head around a little bit and have something concrete rather than, but whatever the board wants to do with those things, but definitely I can make the sign, uh, you know, have some type of signage and tables and if the board wants to be at other things, I'll be more than happy to organize those things. I know there's already, I already have a spreadsheet with those things on there. And we could make it even more obvious of these are the ones that board members are going to be at. I can work with uh, whatever that uh, specific thing is, whether it's a concert or whatever else, get a table, get some signage out there to like, make it a little bit more obvious. Mm -hmm. Definitely do that. Can um, we look at, you know, rather than one of these days, can we really just look at, um, really consider a town hall this spring because otherwise we go sure. next spring we're a year out 15 months out so i'd rather sooner rather than later have this communication opportunity i understand your point about the fall and then let's stay away from that but uh i would think in the spring here eight or so and just just you know and, and again work with the union maybe they want to showcase a couple of their teachers or whatever some art projects you know combine that with what's the uh, there, you know, and, and Dave, I think your point's really well taken. That maybe we just listen. We're here to listen, uh, and uh, I think it where it gets. There's some areas I think we can easily go back and forth on, it, so, you know, whatever. But if it gets in any area of potential, and, and we can then, we can have some topics, you know, suggested topics, but then also just have a time where we're just whatever you need, whatever you want to bring to our attention. Well, now, rather than. We, we do have a second meeting. Off, yeah. No, you're fine. You're fine. There was just a conversation on Facebook about student participation fees, like uh, mm, for yeah. sports and things like that. That would be a good yeah. you now thing. That would, it kind of, I mean, that was, it got a lot of interactions. Yeah. And in that exact vein, instead of calling it a town hall or like, I think that for, like what we don't want to trend is just it's the annual complaint night. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, what if it was like idea night, like? Come and voice like, hey, there's something that's always bothered me about this district and this, and I think it would be better if we did it like this. Like having it, people who have ideas or suggestions, like so it doesn't have to be a topic, like it doesn't have to right. be about athletics or right. about right. curriculum, but trying to make it more in the spirit of let's all work together, everybody, there's probably some great ideas out there and ideas are spurred from, or by things that are bothersome. Like, yeah, hey, I love my district, but this one little thing has always bothered me. I wish we did it like this. Um, and making it more of community, like school improvement night or whatever, idea night, or I, I don't know what the right marketing. Well, we do have that. Yeah, we, we do have an April, second April meeting, so you know that would we could just make it that that is the gist of that night for the main mm -hmm. part of that night. There might be a little couple things that we have like we did today mm -hmm. um, that we'd have to maybe do, especially that time of the year. But we could dedicate the rest of that night to that. It's already on the, the agenda. Mm -hmm. you know, it's already on the calendar. We could just make it more obvious of hey, we're taking the. Uh, the part of the work session or idea or items for discussion is come with your ideas, come, whatever whatever it is the board wants to do, and we can advertise it that way and, and make it. So the advertising already on that. Like night. with local churches, preschools, like to really get the you know the seniors and the, the family resource center, like just get hitting all the areas of the community. Mm -hmm. I so think libraries. As a suggestion for the name, Audra. Um, again, when we when we read our board statement, you know, this is not a meeting, a public meeting, blah, blah, blah. So literally, you use that verbiage, this will be a Bellbrook High School, or by Bellbrook Schools, community, public meeting, whatever, so they understand, oh, this is the thing we always defer at all of our formal meetings, you know, and yeah. just, uh, and then this is, oh yeah, finally we're, we're doing what we say we aren't doing. But is that, is that illegal, like, that's right. Yeah. 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 But, but that section on the agenda is just for mm -hmm. feedback and information. So the rest of the meeting would, would go on as, as right. it's a normal meeting, but then the eyes for discussion would be 
in town hall, whatever it is that we want to but it said even whatever we want to focus says here is not to be considered a public community meeting. So right. then we we call this a Bellbrook Schools public community meeting. You know, that's what it is. It's what we aren't doing here. Now we're going to do here in the second part of this meeting. Or the first half is our regular meeting. The second <coughs> half is yeah. a community yeah. public meeting. Well, just like today, you know, the, we we went out to norms here for that discussion for conversation with the union. So mm -hmm. the rest of the meeting was as we normally done, mm -hmm. but then this part of the meeting is just. Not the board yeah. decided that part of the meeting is different. I can see it be the same kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think April will be a great time because otherwise, yeah. we get into May, we're yeah. kind of on graduation. Yeah. We can do that. Um, that sounds great. March, probably maybe with we'll work. February, obviously, too soon. So I think April will give us my kind of plan. <coughs> I would love to see that. We could just work on the, the language of what to call that and try to, you know, not try, and get that information out there in a timely manner and so forth. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Kevin's going to boot us here in a minute, I'm sure. So I'm just throwing out. I, I already prefaced it when the educators were here. But of course, I don't know how to do it. I have no ideas because how could I? I'm not the person to. But if there's any way to set culture, set policy, and like if there's anything we can do to help take some burden off of the teachers so that they can focus on academics first, I don't know if that's straight. If that's us, like. Mm -hmm. Strengthening partnerships with outside organizations that can help take a burden away. I, I don't. I don't know. Or um, pushing back on some of the stuff the state throws on us. Well, yeah, and obviously there's a lot of stuff that's just mandated, and you got to do it. And the state's not going to give us any money for it. Good luck. Good figure it out. And what, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. But if there are things, and I don't even know what they are, and maybe it's not possible. I don't know. But if we could have some type of as a school board inertia energy focus on these poor teachers that are drowning in all of these things and that are just teaching like streamlining now. a process and you know like because sometimes you have to like check the box here 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 and here like can we streamline things so that they're not having to do all that and maybe that's just us asking the union or the teachers for ideas in that i i don't know i don't know what's possible i don't know what's not possible i would think that that's something that the principal right that's also an administrator yeah, could be tasked with to say, okay, how how are you going to be able to re, uh, reduce some of the uh, it's mostly administrative burden um, that things get you know pushed down to teachers that it's not really a teaching task, but it's a it's a task that you know the teachers maybe have some of the best information about that, but they wouldn't, but it isn't teaching. Yeah, so, and none of this is to say that obviously things they're doing, they're doing for a reason, and it's important, but yeah, I think streamlining, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great potential goal. Yeah, a lot of that is, I'll tell you, there's a lot of pieces out there, it is mandates from the state. Sure. Right? And, and so, um, it, here's a bit of irony, is that, um, uh, I don't know who the legislator is, there's a legislator that wants to look into is there a way to get rid of some mandates and get rid of unfunded mandates, you know, reduce those kind of things. So we give that list to to this to a, a person that's kind of kind of give that into that legislator. At the same time, ironically, there's a bill that's pending that is going to make another mandate on that we have to do this. So they're over here saying we want to get rid of these mandates or what are some things we can get rid of. And oh, we just we just uh, uh, forcing school districts to do 18 <coughs> hours of dyslexia yeah, professional development, say, yeah. which again is, is it's going to be great PD uh, right. for you know science of reading and dyslexia training and so forth. However, 18 hours of unfunded mandates that we have to do with no funding for to do that or time, <coughs> and they were six months to a year late with getting that information out. Um, with getting the actual course out. So they mandated that at the same time. What, what, what mandates can we get rid of? Well, you keep on passing things mm -hmm. that are mandates and, and then you try to take some away. So the number of pieces of information we have to give the state, the number of things that we have to do, get to get to professional development. If you don't have a gift to license your teaching gift to kids, you have to have 15 hours of PD a, a year. OTES, OTES, all those, there's all these unfunded mandates, CCP, those are some things that we've done in the past, or they're doing, that we've mentioned in the past, about 100 grand that the district is spending on College Credit Plus. Great program for kids and families, 
but it's the school district that's paying for post-secondary education mm -hmm. uh, rather than the state that is paying for that. So those those kind of things that um, I guess we need to work with the legislators to try to get some of those mandates out, but they just continue to push bills down. And Does the state pay part of college uh, college bond program? No. Really? No. That's no. And That's is it a reduced rate at all, or is it? It's a reduced rate. Okay. It is a reduced rate. However, we're paying about hundred. I think last year was about hundred grand that we're we're paying colleges for our kids to go to college. And I'll just be blunt here: the courses, the AP courses in our schools, are a million times better and more rigorous than an English one hundred and one kind of example of college. Yeah. Because it's a two different. It's, it's a it's a different kind of class. Right. But kids are not taking AP class or our, our school and then are taking English 101. Okay, it gets a, a, a couple hours. Credit, they don't take the test. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, but <laughs> AP class is such more <laughs> rigorous and is more robust and more. Can, can it get you college credit? I mean, if you test at a certain yeah, level? Yeah, I mean, it can, but it's not it's not um, guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Right. It's not guaranteed. It's not transcriptive credit like the College Credit Plus. College Credit Plus, it is college credit. College credit where the AP, the college has to accept that that, that credit for and can maybe say, yeah, you can take get rid of this class, but you can't get rid of that class. Right. I think whereas the CCP is, it's that specific class. Right. I remember my daughter said um, when she was a freshman, I heard she was taking anatomy and physiology and saying, you know, this was just a repeat of what I did in high school. Yeah. 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 She took the AP. Yeah. Of course. So again, not talking badly about college credit plus necessarily, but you know, it's great for families and, and kids of getting rid of that debt. However, the state should be paying for that. We so take that. Unfunded yeah. mandate. It's an unfunded mandate <laughs> until we have to do it. There's no option. So, but uh, that that said, though, one of our goals as a board would be to formulate our opposition to that, even though it's a shot in the dark and probably is never going to amount to anything. But through the through the legislative days on sure. it, I think you become aware of that and support our teachers by trying at least trying. It's, if you don't try, it's not going to happen, right? So if enough people complain, so maybe one of our goals could be to you know the part of the legislative days on to look at opportunities to reduce unfunded mandates, especially those that infringe upon the time of our educators. And we can draft and pass resolutions in support of yes. or in opposition to, yes, and, to the state. and I, I know that state legislators see that and they they value that. Um, yeah. What's the wording we use that goal? Advocate for advocate. reduction of or advocate I don't know, streamline processes, the streamline you know, work on teacher workloads, uh, reduction. Advocate for, I think it's a good word. Advocate. Advocate for reduced. Advocate for teacher focus on primary work duties on the academic side. I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, we advocate for reduction of burden on educational yeah. policies and practices right. at the state level or it's not even state yeah. level, just something like that. Non academic for. Reduction of non-academic burden on teachers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I like that. So advocate for reduction of non-academic burden. Burden, yeah. Just call it what it is. I would. I don't. I don't know if I'd say non-academic. Some of those things are academic, okay. but um, non-classroom. Like the dyslexia. Non -classroom. Okay, good stuff. But eighteen hours is a little extreme. And they're not paying for any of them. They're not paying for us to spend our time on professional development or other uh, pieces of that. It's not funded mandate on, on their part. The fair school funding plan coming back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, what's the word? We're we're looking looking for? Advocate for reduction of blank burden on teachers. Burdensome practices and policy. There we go. Yeah. Kind of, kind of my thought on this. I, I reported in one of my legislative liaison meetings like six months ago, and I don't even remember the bill number now. I can look in my notes and look it up. But somebody was proposing that in four years from now, the Ohio Department of Education would have to like reduce its 
burden by if it was like 10% or something. It's like, that's a fantastic idea. That's a great goal because legislators, as you say, pass laws to do things and do things and do things. Well, how about as legislative bodies, we take burden away? Maybe that should be the focus. I like, I think what we can work with you here, what sounds pretty good to me, I think this would be appreciated by our teachers to say it this way. One of our goals is to advocate for the reduction of burdensome product policies and practices on teachers. So, teachers mm -hmm. slash the district, yeah. And we could but reach we need out. to say who we're going to advocate to, like advocate to the legislation. Well, well it depends on the policy. Yeah, Maybe yeah. we can. So just leave yeah. it as advocate. Yeah. And there could be an effort okay. of reaching out to other school boards, yeah. either mm -hmm. individually or designate a proxy on behalf of the board to do that. And you know, what, ten school boards in our district like that idea, and all sign on to the same resolution and send it to Columbus. So. Okay. Fair because it isn't strictly the legislator, it could be others. Sure. Um, I, I got it, and I could share a little more about it during the uh, OSBA stuff, but I have a copy of what the um, OSBA <coughs> officially lobbies for, which is essentially what the delegate business meeting is all about, is, is approving or disapproving uh, recommendations for other things that the, the OSBA can, can lobby for. I can get everybody a copy of this. Okay. Uh, doesn't mean that, that we should not move ahead with, with that because uh, certainly hearing from individual districts as well as the OSBA um, mm -hmm. makes sense for us to, to lobby for <coughs> changes in practices and policies. We were at our half hour. Okay, so everybody okay with moving on? And obviously, this can be continuing discussion for. You know, many meetings and and yeah, so, too. So, so we have communication. We want to improve communication with like all stakeholders, and then the advocacy. Mm -hmm. We're we're, we're going to codify this in a written document so that yeah on our on our web page people can see this is what the board goals are. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I, guess, yeah. I think we can talk more about that and figure out the right way to do it. Okay. Well, we have well. Okay. So we're that. Either way, we're going to a couple people work together and we better come together the next. Or meeting maybe with some suggestions on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just probably need one more goal. Two, yeah. probably not enough. I think we need to have a financial goal. I just, uh, that's great. Yep. Yeah. 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 Can you? Uh, sorry, Kevin. Throw it on. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's talk about that for five. Let's talk about that for five minutes. And I deserve, since you're burnt out. I think that I really think that we need to start looking at like an alternative funding, like not property tax. I really think that we need to start really looking at. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carpenter's brought it up several times. No one likes that, but I mean, I think it's a more stable funding for a, like an income. Just to start, just start researching. We're fine right now, and we need to reiterate we're okay right now. But we're being proactive mm -hmm. in taking steps to make sure that we continue to be fiscally responsible. And mm -hmm. I said okay, I was kind of not totally different. Person. Okay. Like <laughs> well, that, that like would be part of it. Yeah. Like that, we need to, I think, start shifting a posture to more. I mean, this is each of us internally, individually, but shifting to more of a financially conservative posture. Yeah. yeah. Because I think we're at the point where everything is getting more expensive in the world. Mm -hmm. I want to whether we down the road. No matter what happens, no matter how fiscally responsible we are, whatever, we are going to need more money. Whether that turns into right. some other sort of tax, right, whatever. Mm -hmm. But whenever we get there, I want to be able to say, right. look what we did with the money you gave us last time. Mm -hmm. Look how far we made it go. Right. And look how we had to make some really tough decisions and not do some yes. things we would have really liked to do because we are trying to stretch your dollar and right. and I think that should go be as far as we could. Yeah. yeah. That would be careful. Sure. Just being like more fiscally conservative. If I may nitpick just a little bit, because I'm exactly right where you're at. I think that's kind of what I was thinking for this. But just I heard you say like begin being fiscally responsible. Like we yeah. and I know that that's probably not what you meant, because we we have been. Um, we have definitely made investments and have made decisions that have cost money but and thanks to our grant writers and everybody who looks into this stuff, uh, you know, so much of that was 
ESSER COVID money. And so, you know, the bus purchases, so much of that was covered by this grant. And safety improvements, we got $200,000, you know, whatever. Like, while we have certainly made decisions that have spent money, um, we were very thoughtful in it and did it, I think, the right way. But much of that was not local taxpayer money. We're, we're moving to the end of that. <laughs> the ESSER is, I don't know, wherever it is, like that's kind of going away or whatever. So obviously we can continue utilizing grants and things in the future, but I'm wondering a goal, and again, this is a cultural thing, maybe not something you can exactly write out really well, I don't know, but of making sure you understand how brand new things, if using local taxpayer money, will be funded whether that means making a difficult decision of, hey, you want this brand new thing, and maybe we all want it too, where, where do we need to take money away from somewhere else mm -hmm. to, to do that thing? Right. Or what, you know, rather than just spending money on new things, me, just personally, and I don't know if you agree or disagree, that, that would be kind of a good mindset of going forward, viewing the lens of, hey, there's this new thing, which would be awesome. Oh, that would be awesome. How are we going to pay for it? Rather than just saying, yep, and doing the easy thing right? and then having it come back and bite us, in, not us, but the district in yeah. eight, nine, 12 right. years. Mm -hmm. So I think, really, we should have at least three goals. I think the goal, one goal should be financial responsibility, whatever. And then branches under that, we understand it to be what you just talked about, yeah. but also how you, what you talked about. Because that really is financially responsible. Because mm -hmm. we, as we, as we continue to rely upon property taxes, thanks to the state, um, we are really burdening the people in our community that are on fixed incomes, elderly, retired, disabled, whatever, um, and really just pretty much anybody. You know, because yeah. it's just such a really expensive uh, proposition when the schools are funded. So that would be my bet, or my my input here is to put financial response, uh, financial reward here. Um, Continue financial uh, responsibility, and we understand that mean the two things we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Did any of that, like, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, Anything um, you want to add or color to that? No, that's not. I think for a board poll, I think what I shared, I think maybe the way to capture what you all are thinking is <coughs> financial, but like, start, start socializing with that financial advisory committee, perhaps, like. How to manage our revenue portfolio. Rather than yeah, let's rather than waiting until we eat another levy, yeah. let's like maybe trying to use that body to be more pro like proactive or outside of the box or whatever or because that is that committee is made up of community members of of varying backgrounds, right? There are Senior citizens that have you know, children in our district or that used to. There are community leaders. There are members of industry. There are like it's a pretty good cross section of members of our community, but members of our community that are supportive of our schools, but that understand them. They have varying perspective. I, I guess is what I'm saying. So that's the one year uh, really with the financial advisory committee. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I really never fully appreciated or understood or. Been informed enough about what it is, and it really kind of sounds like exactly what it could step up what it's doing because this is why not step it up. But we need to rely on them more heavily, for, perhaps for a vision about how we could fund our schools and get community buy-in and what we maybe we previously have done. So, well, right now the financial advisory committee is the superintendent's advisory committee. So right. overlap. Well, we just use the superintendent advisory committee to talk about the financial advisory committee, financial advisory stuff. We use it as kind of a conduit for that. It's really so. Who is the financial advisor? Are you on the financial advisory committee? I'm actually. I have to report to them according to audit. I have. We have to have a financial advisory committee that I present the audit to every year, uh -huh. and I tell them, you know, here's what they found. Here's what we're going to do to correct these things. And then we also. It's not a requirement, but we <coughs> send the five-year forecast to them and explain it. And we've used the Superintendent's Advisory Committee as a financial advisory committee. I mean, the Financial Advisory Committee could be a uh, Superintendent, Treasurer, and Board Member, too. I mean, it could be whatever we want, but there's a requirement that there has to be one. Ideally, if, you know, you got a bunch of business leaders in the community, and but we, 
it, uh, we did that in the past. And again, it's hard to get people to come to that meeting. You know, you're going to have a meeting at nine o'clock uh, Tuesday morning every other month, and you know they're, they got their own business and they come and sit and I explain to them what's going on in school or whatever financially, and it's a little dry. And it's hard to make that really exciting. <laughs> uh, and then so, I've seen this several times. You get down to where people are not attending the meeting. So we decided that that was a pretty good active meet, uh, actively attended group that was a superintendent's advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Let's use that as a financial advisory committee too to uh, meet the audit standards and and uh, explain that uh, we haven't formed anything since then. It's hard to form that too. I mean, <coughs> uh, you know, form a separate financial advisory committee. I think it's a good one. I mean, honestly, just. I thought it worked well. Providing us as something more concrete for that committee to do rather than just to receive it too. Problem. Is that something I could participate in as a guest? I just kind of, I mean, I'm not the, would be the official representative, but I'd certainly be happy to be part of that, particularly to focus on the, you know, what our revenue portfolio is going to look like. And that, and unless we're changing something in the meeting, would be, you know, uh, Dr. Kozak has a part of it where. It's a superintendent's advisory part of that meeting, yeah. and then money would be that financial part. And, and maybe it's not that committee. Maybe that's not correct. Maybe if that's a board goal, maybe that one board or two board members go and set up some sort of a informal, kind of like, I don't know, brainstorming or mm -hmm. like idea generation, community input forum. Talk, let's talk to all the people who have. Been around for a long time and I've seen how this changes. Let's talk to new members of like people who just moved here. Let's um, it doesn't have to be that committee, maybe that's that but maybe that's a bad idea. I don't know. But no, I mean, just starting to gauge and brainstorm and discuss, I don't think it needs to be a constant recurring topic at our big meeting. No. True. Until like we could just sit here and Pontificate around and around, but I think there needs to be kind of take that on. It needs to be more focused and more deliberate than what right. we can do on a random Thursday night. Right. It's the hard, hard thing about a financial committee discussion that yields a lot of good information is that typically you're covering topics like uh, you know when you're when it's time for a levy, what kind of levy. I mean, what do you think about this kind of levy? And generally, you know, people don't want additional taxes that they keep from it. That's the topic. Then there's the topic of making the financial information, communicating financial information to the public at times when it's not levy time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find too much else because, I mean, if there's something, if the roof is in trouble, we need to repair it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. and. 70% of our expenditures are salaries and wages, uh, benefits. So, um, I mean, you know, are we going to talk to that committee about that kind of thing? That's kind of a tough, tough conversation to have with a community. It's just difficult to do the actual sitting down and, and you know, we're going to have a meeting today. What's on the agenda with that group of community people? And we've made it in the past, like I said, going over the five-year forecast, uh, explaining why we need to levy that's coming up. Uh, did you know that the district, here's a pie chart, this is how we spend our money, like what, what's included in the board packet, and some of those things. Uh, we do have discussions, but if you have them too often, there's nothing left to discuss that people want to attend. That's a good point, Dale. I, I guess what I would say is, literally, I can't you know, put stomp or underscore enough the seriousness of, of us needing to start now on a long process of finding an alternative to property tax-based funding. So for like what we're, what we're saying, it's a task force we need to really start building, you know, sensing the community, you know, exploring what other communities have done throughout the state. So the other stuff, I get it, yeah. I mean, how many times do you need to hear that we have work since 70% of our money on on, on that, we only got 15% we use it for the roof or whatever, you know, and buses and everything else. So, um, this is not a trivial thing. It's going to be a multi year effort with, I think, people large in this committee can be focused on just that alone. Funding, that's what I'm looking for here. Um, revolution is not a good word. 
um, uh, reinvention or redefinition or whatever, and it's not a one week meeting, it's going to, it's going to go over a period of time. And so I think that could be a new, new focus of this group because it's years out, but it's going to come back. There is going to be a levy, and we're going to have the same potential contention we've had you know, over the last few years. And it's not too early to start. Right, because there's a lot of education involved. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Because the initial reaction is that a uh, very high percentage would not be for that. Yes. But if if there's a combo, well, I'm going to learn more details now, a combo yeah. reduction of property yeah. taxes yeah. with, with exchanging, yeah. exchanging revenue that's stream, that's right. Right. A new part of A with right. 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 B. Mm -hmm. And do it in a way that's not going to be persuasive. Right. <laughs> and maybe part of their focus could be too is to engage in the state, but I see almost zero hope in that because clearly they didn't get it when the fair school funding plan it didn't help us. You know, we're still maybe even slightly more dependent on the property taxes than we were before. I think we used to be twenty seven percent, you know, from the state now we're down to twenty five or something like that. So it's um so that doesn't mean we shouldn't try, you know. Talked to Brian Lampton before about this. He said, "Yeah, we understand we need to do something, but you know, something going to come out of that or not? I don't know." You know so that committee could be really spent a lot of time on this, and um, you need some smart, great people. Um, that and that will and but going back to August's point that if we're being fiscally conservative here, it that selling point will be a whole. I mean, it goes right with that. We can mm -hmm. sell that a whole lot easier if we're saying we are. You know, living with our needs and being a budget conscious group. Okay, I can try to put, we can, whoever try to put some word in there, I'll do that and then can revisit it. Yeah, Conservatism in a way that is not the political. You can pick a different word. Yes, like, but it's not what we're talking. Responsible. Yes, financially responsible. Aware, like, financially aware. Continue. Yeah. Uh, next on our list, let's try to spend like 12 minutes. Um, kind of a high level, just oh, kind of a high level discussion just around board policies. Um, at one point, um, we talked about needing to kind of revisit those, take a look. I think we've made great strides. I know he personally just really grateful. Uh, we made the decision, like Mrs. Dorn to this point has been attending the policy review meetings with Leola, Dr. Kozad. I think that's just been immensely helpful so she can be aware and also I know provide really good input in steering some policy decisions. Um, high level discussion about that of what if anything else um, could be done, maybe potentially like regularly taking a chunk. Um, I said one time it's kind of like a read a Bible in a year plan where like it's going to take forever um, but you know take a chunk and we all individually review whatever the, the section 100 and then come with thoughts, and we just spend a little bit of time in a meeting talking about that together. Other ideas, other thoughts, or nothing at all? Well, relatedly, I think we've learned that there are not always just one option for those. Is that what you're saying? I mean, that there's not always just one option of a policy that, um, what's, the, what's the group? Um, Neola. Neola. Neola provides. Um, we need to maybe look at those. <clears throat> um, in times past, maybe we've incorporated some language that in retrospect that we wouldn't have really wanted to if we would really thought through it a little bit more. It's because we're just swallowing what some, some lawyer group has given us, you know, so. Is there a way to designate, too? Like, when I go in and read them, I'm not sure personally what is, like, a federal mandate, what is a state mandate, what is just a, an actual board policy that we've put in there. Is there a way to differentiate that? But that's, that's the hard, like, in going through that process. I learned a lot because I originally was like, yeah, we should do the whole read by one year thing. Like, we should do, we should do little chunks, we should... which makes Kevin. Uh, <laughs> then, but then I think as I learned more, I'm like, well, this section and this section and this section are all repeats. It's just that we say that the dress code for or whatever this policy is the same for staff as it is for teacher. They're like as the certified staff, the same for not certified staff, it's the same for students, it's the same for yeah. whatever. And yeah. so like, we'll make, there's a bunch that are all duplicates throughout. You wouldn't want to start changing one without having like four thoughts and understand that that affects the other one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'd kind of almost like to, like, we could assign that, hey, I'm going to take this section, take that section, and read them all, and then come back to the group with any that we find to be problematic or we have a significant amount of questions about, and highlighting certain ones that, like, we want to learn more. Because a lot of them are, every school has this policy, it's, it's they're just, so this is what happens if you're not in the building by the time the bell rings. I'm just making something up. But like, I think we're all trying to get at the things that are either have been contentious in the past or are primed to be contentious in the future and wanting to make sure that those policies re reflect the views of the people, like of the currently elected board, right? Um, so if we were to start on the section, I'd recommend the the zero 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 one as a as a starting place. That's the kind of like a foundational one, mm -hmm. and then one that relates strictly to board. Yeah. Um, before, before we go on to certified staff and non-certified staff and students and so forth, but, but to start with just one segment. Right. Maybe just have a schedule like a year. We're going to look at this. We're going to look at this. But that's a good place to start. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah. and see yeah. how see how it goes. Start our own area. And then yeah, because <laughs> you know, position heal thyself. You right, know, exactly. Says, but, so then at, but then at some point, I think, to answer your question somewhat, we do have to bring the old in at some point uh, to this because there is, as far as I know, there is no way right. of telling what's a federal mandate, what state, right. and we're relying on the person that does this professionally to advise us on that. Well, what would I, I would propose for consideration is appointing one or two board members to maybe sit with, or one more to sit with or somebody else, uh, and myself and, and Kevin of sitting. What, whatever section the board wants to work on first, bring the old in, let's see the original, let's see what we actually have, and then go through it that way, and then come back to the board with, mm, these seven are just federal state policies, they are what they are. Mm -hmm. These three or four, we maybe need to, to dig a little bit deeper in. Because if you don't, there's a lot of policies. You're going to spend yeah. a lot of time at board meetings. It's going to be forever. It's going to be forever. And relying on those <coughs> one or two board members to kind of be the filter of like, mm, these three or four, we maybe need to take a closer look at rather than we need to look at 17 of these new policies. Because we also have twice a year a regular update of policy. So this is on top of that. Um, and that's a lot of work already. But that's just, that's just so we did two sense. visits a year with Neola that we are mm -hmm. paid for. Anything else would be additional. Correct. So yeah, we were kind of ran this by the Neola. Yeah. Right? It's like we could do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's going to be right, If we say this first section, like, hey, by the by this date, any like board member read policies this through this, and if you have like. If anything jumps out at you that you have questions about or is striking to you in any way, filter those to whoever Dr. Co there. Whoever filter those to this person. This person can try to get the <coughs> the versions of those from Neola that have all the options. Like like this is what R says and this is what Neola says that you can select from. If, if and you can always go rogue from there if you want, but like rather than saying we are going to sit down and go through all the policies with Neil or President, no, you don't no, want to do that. No, no. no. Um, but doing it chunks at a time because there's going to be a whole big section where it's like, yep, that's fine, that, that served us well, that served us well. We've never heard anybody complain about that. That seems to be like big. Like the majority of it is pretty, yeah, you know, vanilla, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Aren't there literally thousands of policies? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so, like, if it's, you printed it out, it's a it's a three three four What's it's that? Worse three like five inch binders. Binders. Yeah. It's a thousand pages. It's probably three thousand pages, right? So it's uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, each of us are going to have to like almost go through it and read the topics and say, so, yeah, I mean, like the, the like, start time to school or the like, this and that and the other like. Not gonna worry, oh that jumps out to me. I want to take a different what do we say about that? And take a different, you know, we've all done that at different periods of time where we're trying to research a certain topic, but I, I don't know that he was a sat down and just started 
going through it. What was enlightening to me was the learning that there are like, okay, this is the general federal law, state law, whatever, and then this is the oldest uh, 10 different interpretations of it. Which one do you like? You know, I, I didn't realize that that was. Well, you know, maybe it's not that like extreme, but it's like, hey, this 90, like you need a policy like this. This 90% of it needs to say this, but for this last sentence, you can pick the sentence yeah. of the sentence. Yeah. I and those two sentences might sound very familiar, like <laughs> very similar. It just, just a little depends. Little nuance, yeah. Some of them are more bold, like there are more bold or starkly different choices. Yes. But that's the exception. Most of them are, yeah. you have to have a policy like this, and you can't deviate. These are the only two piece parts that you, where you can deviate, um, which meets the intent of your district better or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah or it's things that we're already doing. You know, this is just a, I won't say a silly example, but who's going to evaluate principals? I mean, you want the superintendent or you want the director or whatever? I mean, that, that could be, you have to choose which one. So it isn't like there's like this. We have a director or whatever. So right. Right. Exactly. Right. right. So I mean, that's that, so when there's choice, it isn't like there's like these crazy choices necessarily. It's what are you doing already? Okay. Superintendent can do it. Okay. Mark Superintendent. So I mean, there's, yeah. but you got to choose who's going to do that specific thing. So it isn't like there's. But like I think to that is just that's what we're already doing, and there's nobody else, and that's what we're doing. So. Like, like maybe very specific, somewhat specifically here, I think with Title IX, there was some wording choices, you know, and that you know kind of delve out in some controversial areas, and uh, that. We're going to litigation now, you know, and uh, based on policies from our federal government and court responses and things like that, for which we just received a letter, if I remember correctly, from from the state about uh, how we should proceed in some of these areas. And um, so clearly, it, it isn't always clear cut. You know, some things just really don't matter, like what you just example you gave, and some some do, very much so. And just a, a couple words can make a tremendous difference and. On special controversial issues. Well, can I tell you a so The Title IX thing, I think there are things that at certain points in time it had to read that because that became that was the law at the time, and then that law is being challenged in court, so now it's, you know, now it doesn't have to read that. Mm -hmm. So there, that's where we're going to want to focus our effort on yeah. Title IX, but on those kinds of things. Those kinds of things. I would say the specific policy, maybe this is an overlap. The specific policy of the controversial issues policy, um, I think, might be a really good play. Like, I, I did get a copy the last time we met um, of what all of the choices you can pick. Mm -hmm. um, I think our, ours is fine, it's served us okay. But I think there are some of the things that a previous board didn't choose, like that we might want to take a look at, and I think it might be a really good first thing to take a look at with the staff members, because really that is yeah. saying, like, it, that specific policy talks about what can they say, what can teachers teach, how can they express personal opinion or not, mm -hmm. and they're going to have a big stake in that. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I look through all of the, the choices that were available, like, I liked a lot of them. Like, I think it was a, it was a really good framework. Like, I don't think we'd ever have to go back and recreate the wheel or start from scratch. Mm -hmm. But there are probably some things that we haven't selected mm -hmm. or that we, uh, school board of whatever time of the past, didn't select mm -hmm. that the current board might want and that the current teachers and staff sure. might prefer because it better protects them or it makes things more clear and less squishy or gray. So maybe that's, maybe that is two birds with one stone. So I think that's probably a good place to start. That's going to be one of the ones we want to take a deeper look at, but also that's going to be one that we want to make sure we need to make sure we hear what staff has to say about that policy. So I think I agree. That one is yeah, really, I mean, really it's the elephant in the room, right? So we need to, uh, I think, address that one. Um, 
And then also, I go back to the Title IX thing too, the, especially in light of the <coughs> correspondence of the action by the State Board and the recent letter we received you know, from, from the State Board of Education. I would say that um, policies <coughs> uh, accepted as recommended by the superintendent club. Uh, Dr. St. Pierre was in superintendent's role. I mean, essentially, without question, except for one scenario that I was involved in. I had to do with legal uh, legal limit of alcohol for bus drivers, and I advocated for zero, and eventually got it. So, it should be six o'clock. That was controversial. Um, <laughs> that was controversy back then, right? Yes, that's right. Well, and, and not to say that anything was bad about any previous board, but like the world is different. Yeah. Like, there are it's things that a, the, a previous board might have selected, and they couldn't even imagine the kind of things that are before us now. So, right? well, might have served the board in 2003, <coughs> which, if you look at the policies, you can yeah. see like when they were last mm -hmm. updated or revisited, right. like 2003, yeah. may not be serviceable in 2023. Yeah, right. I agree. So, so what rubber meets the road, what, what do we want to do? I, I was going to throw out maybe a recommendation, what if all of us on our own individually look at controversial policies, or the 29, 20, or something, I, uh, whatever the controversial issues policy is, and I was going to say, that I think it's first, I don't know, it's near the beginning, a section for bylaws, because that's, to David's point, that's kind of how the board operates, and I don't know that there's much in there um, to change, but at least for us all to be aware of them. Um, and we all individually look at the section on bylaws, which is either first or second, and that controversial issues policy, and then we can come back next meeting or um, email Dr. Kozad with questions you may have. Contact Dr. Kozad. Well, Title IX. Sorry? Title IX. Title IX. Title IX. We need to take a look at that as well. Especially in light of the letter that we got, the action by the State Board of Education and the letter that we received. I think, I think we need to deal with that yeah. in the near term versus uh, the longer term. Good. I mean, what did we just say? If there are any right off the bat that yes. we know right. we have yeah, questions about, yeah. let's give Dr. Kozad that list of numbers and let's ask Neola for what does their template, including all of the, like, what was optional, what's mandatory, whatever. Oh, we don't need another meeting. <laughs> We right. Yeah. No, just, no, well, that's just asking like them for the like, hey, can you yeah. give us the your blank template right. for the, these ten policies, so that we can we might we might think <coughs> we don't like something, and then we realize we don't have it's not our choice. That was right. a rule made by state legislature, and that's what it has to say. And so uh, it's no point in us debating it here at a meeting. Right. It's not yep. ours. Yeah. I'll say it. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm fine with getting a list to me of ones that we want to focus on. Do we want to to put those through the normal process with Neola in the spring because it's going to be coming up and put that within the whole conversation there and then that way we can meet with him and look at what the original was and what the, what the and get input from board members to me of what yeah. they would like of those controversial issues. Yeah. Do we know when that is? If we can do that. March, April, May. Okay. Something that's coming up here. And if we can find a way to maybe push the controversial one out to teachers or, you know, maybe we'll have to get feedback. Yep. Let's be really thoughtful about, like, maybe that's the like first. Super thoughtful. Yeah. Yep. Like, round table, maybe. Oh, yeah. or, well, whether it's in a round table or whether that's something that we take when we go to one of their first meetings yeah. and say, hey, this is something that we're considering revisiting. The current one is fine. We think. Some of these other options might you might prefer more, and we might prefer more. And like maybe yep. that's the first yep. go. Yeah. Does that give us something actionable mm -hmm. to do before yep. the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Before the next meeting, yeah. April. I'm sorry, February. It's February. What February? Whatever. Yeah. So I'm not clear. What? What are we doing for the next board meeting? Um, individual board members on their own are going to look at controversial issues as well as the section on bylaws and then anything and everything that's a big tight Title IX stuff, which I'm sure it's, it's, it's spread a lot through there, you got some keyword searching, um, as well as anything that, that just piques your interest or that you've run across that you have questions about, and then contacting Dr. Kozad 
um, was saying like, hey, these are something I would like to learn more about. Something we've not, not directed them yet, but saying let's have a discussion. We may want to ask Viola in March, April, whatever it is, to take a look at options for these. So are those ones? Sorry? So I don't think that has to be before the next meeting, because I don't think there's anything there. that's going to happen at the next meeting regarding that. Like, so are those ones going through the normal viola process, uh, looking at, hey, we'll bring that individual in, and here are the ones you want to take a look at to then, as a filter or first look, and then that, those, that one or two people and myself and Kevin can then provide some input to the board of here are the suggestions or here are some possibilities. I think it would be priming the all for when they come, usually they come and they say, hey, these right. are the ones we think you need to look at. Right. As opposed to just like, they'll still do that. Right. There's going to be things that change that they think we right. need to look at. Right. But then also with enough advance notice where we say, and these are the ones that right. we want to look yes. at. Right. Right. Um, so finding out when that meeting is. So that's happening. Providing before. them the input to say, hey, please come prepared to talk about all of these things right. too. That but then that information that that's before then anything comes back to the board. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because, well, if there's going to be any ch changes to policy as a result of that NIOLA meeting, then obviously the board yes. gets its two readings right. and we have a later at that. Right. You know, at a later time. <laughs> and I just threw out that board meeting because me, if I don't write a due date down, like I don't do it. So I, it, it doesn't have to be. I was just throwing it out there. Next board meeting just really fast. That's all I'm saying. Like we're yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's a lot of reading. We just need to know. make sure that we get in. Make sure we get input to Dr. Koza prior to well, whatever advance. There's, there's two board meetings in February, though. Yes. No. No, no, no just one. Okay, just one. Okay. No, next two board meetings. But it doesn't have anything board. to do with the board meeting. No, it doesn't have anything to do with the board meeting. So, just like by the end of winter, when's the next meeting? I'll let me do. He has not contacted me. Yet. Okay. And again, it's, it's March, April. So, Usually I was thinking by the end of February. By the end of February, have that to you. Yeah, by the end of February would be reasonable. And then it's probably going to have to be a separate meeting with him because it's, it's already two, three, four hours long with normal policy, and that's fine. And then, but in the meantime, we can get this really? controversial issues policy before the teachers slash union yeah. or whatever for them yeah. for start providing feedback. Do we just send it to them and say, what do you think? Or is there truly a face-to-face -face meeting? Again, on again I, I think that would be a great topic to, for myself and one or two board members to go to the executive committee and get input from that. I think that would be something that's concrete. Because well, otherwise, you're going to need so much input from yeah written it's going to be hard to like come to a conclusion on it right. so i think yeah. if you have a discussion that would be really yeah appreciate on their side and i think helpful to us good next uh, again just kind of high i'm sorry did you have something just all that so all the all that stuff is due to me by february 28 29 just okay yeah. sounds reasonable uh, moving on, just very high level framework type of discussion about strategic plan. Thoughts, wishes, desires. Uh, Dr. Kozen, yeah, just some. Yeah, just some. Try questions is the basic one. We want to do one. So again, that maybe be the most obvious, but a new, a new one, correct? We want to do a new one. Time frame to implement. If we do, do we want? Um, Working with an outside consultant to help us put that together, and what's what's kind of the time frame of, of that? I mean, the last one we did was five years, and COVID hit, and everything else, and it just got sidetracked. And five years is a really long time. You think five years ago that's a long time? Yeah, yeah. 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 it seems like a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. All like years. started that are no longer. It's a different. Yeah. 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 Right. So maybe something a little shorter, but just a high level with. Uh, we want to do one. What's the time frame? Are we thinking we want to get started now? Is that other open to outside consultant? Because if it is, then I I've already got some contacts that I could I could talk with some some organizations and, and get some feedback on that and bring that back to the board at some point in time. So in high level, not hey we need to look at this specifically, even though, but just do we want to do one? And any thoughts on how to high level? Work? I kind of like to. Get your your feedback and administration's feedback on things that um, we would have included in the old strategic plan that are still pressing needs. What are you know what what do we see from that that is still you know top of the top of the heap on what's you know 
what's the best value for us as an organization, what are the greatest needs uh, as, you know, from, from, in, from you, Kevin, and, the, and your administrator's uh, perspective. Right. Um, I think I, I got to be interested in that kind of feedback. I um, also think that having, I don't know, how many we had last time, nine or ten different areas is way too many. Because mm -hmm. um, you end up spreading too thin and not really getting much really accomplished. Um, especially when other things come barreling in mm -hmm. and etc. Uh, I think you get more bang for your bucket out of focusing on two or three and on a shorter time frame like that. A two year time frame, that may be at the max. Right, with, with how fast things change nowadays, I don't think doing a five year or is even realistic or yeah. effective. Businesses so, are changing away from that as well. Right. Yeah. A, a three year is a long one. Right. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. I really like you know, having something like this, you know, that makes us focus on what, what, why do we exist, what's our purpose. You know, it, it's our it's our grounding stone when we go back to you know whenever we make decisions. And so, I think literally having something like this it needs to be expanded upon. You know, with just some specifics, but it doesn't need to be a five hundred page document. You know, it literally five pages, ten. What pages. are you holding up? It's, it's, it's in your bag. Thank you. Sorry. I thought you pulled something out of your bag or something. And I was like. And what is this magical document? Right. It's too far away. Right? I know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, just, you know, why do we exist? What's our purpose? What what we reflect back upon when we reach a why in the road, you know, things like that. So this to me is fundamental. Now, that I'm saying we may need to revise this, you know, I don't know. I think it looks pretty darn good, but you know, that said, we could maybe do some you know, polishing on it. Um, but beyond that, it is a minimum, you know, give me a three to five to ten page document that I as a parent, you know, could read and go, this is what this school exists for, this is what they do, you know. And it's this is the heart of yeah. why we do everything we do. And I'm not so sure we need a consultant for that, you know. Uh, I would agree. You know, yeah. um, I, I think that a really big in-depth analysis is necessary when you have a district that's really struggling. You have a lot of these areas that need improvement. Right. I think when you're performing well and at a high level, just these are the things that we value. We're going to document what we're going to do to keep going in that way. And I think a strategic plan also does need to look a little bit out and like look at the things that we don't talk about day to day. But hey, when is the next time we're going to have to build a new building? When is the like? There are some things like big facility questions in yeah. that, that yeah. when do we start, need to start strategizing for some of that? I don't have a great grasp of that myself. Like, <coughs> I know our facilities are nice and well kept now, but they, they don't last forever. And like, are we growing? Are we going to need more space? Are, is something crumbling? Is something going to outlast its you know, useful life? Um, and what are those big ticket items? When, when, how far are those down the road? Like looking at some of the more tangible things from that perspective. But I think the fact that I, I agree with this it needs to be very top level. Let's focus on just two or three big focus areas to document how we've been able to Excellent. do as well as we have. Um, when we say areas, what means things like curriculum, maybe? I don't know. Um, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, like two or three over, maybe one, like maybe you go as big as like culture and like academics and facilities. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing some out, but uh, yeah, I don't think we need to get down into the nitty gritty, the, the nit noy piece. Uh, I think you spend a lot of time, you spend all your time planning and then don't leave any time for executing by the time the plan gets done. It's time to redo it, and you just constantly are in a planning loop. All right, so I'm here now. We do want to do, we do, do yes. we do want to do one. Yes, yes we do want to do um, one. Uh, we still need to talk about time frame, but so keeping it more focused, a couple, you know, much. Our last one was extremely ambitious, extremely mm -hmm. ambitious. That was happened the year before that I came in, and then we kind of reorganized. And then after the pandemic, well, after COVID kind of settled down a little bit, 
we then like halved it again, and then we like halved it again. I mean, and we and then we still um, there's still a lot there. So I would agree that we need to keep it that that the piece of it short and sweet of two to three goals, one to two to three goals, something in that range. On the curriculum instruction assessment, that kind of size, um, again, culture could be a piece of that. We're focusing on focusing on focus three right now, so we are we are doing that right now. So that could be a piece. Facilities definitely needs to be a piece because we have some, I think some, at some point we need to make some decisions about the building downtown and or uh, sports facilities or other parts of the buildings. Again, this middle school is the newest building and it's uh, 17 years old. And so, you know, things we need to, to plan for some of those things also. And then probably finances maybe need to be one to, uh, we were talking about that as a committee and so forth. But just those kind of things. Consultant, are we thinking, we're, we're thinking no on the consultant? Well, what, what are your needs? What are your thoughts on that? Again, I, I, some outside help would be helpful of trying to get it organized and, and then so forth. I'm not sure what that might look like. Um, like a program manager? So I can just... That could be a piece <laughs> of it, but just if someone to at least hold our hands a little bit on trying to get it trying to get it structured and then kind of letting us go with it. Um, again, I'm not sure what that looks like. Again, it depends on how big we want to go. If we want all the stakeholder input and all of that, then that's a pretty robust thing, depending on what you know, again, what we do with that. So, are there entities that do this very thing? Yeah, I was gonna say OSBA probably. Has OSBA some. does it, and we really should look at examples of other school districts, right, as well, sure. and, yeah, and bring those in. But again, I, I, I maintain that I'm a fan of something short and sweet that, that's actionable, rather than something philosophical that sits on the. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. Like here's like here, this is to me this there's too much here of just you know a lot of districts they go with two or three words. Yeah. Here's what we're doing, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Innovate is innovate is engagement. No, the belief statements, vision yeah. statement, that kind oh, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Okay. Because again, it does get on a shelf and no. <laughs> I mean, very high level, All right. right? Very high level. <laughs> I mean, a lot of some organizations I've worked in, you walk, some of the organizations I've, I've worked in, you walk in the building, and right there is their mission statement, their vision statement. And you're reminded of that every day that you walk in. You What's here? Oh, it's that sore. I mean, yeah. it changes from time to time. But it's this is why we exist, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I think something to that level, yeah, less words than that, you know. But, Yep. Less is more often, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Especially for something high level that's just paving the road in a few years into the future, not getting down into the weeds and nitty gritty because that's inappropriate for a board like this to do so anyway. Just setting some. So I guess I'm interested elements. in your perspective on an outside. Um, Again, I think it would be helpful trying to get it all organized and someone that specializes in that, at least trying to get us up and running and let us. In us telling them, here's what we're looking for, and are you able to help us kind of get it structured and up and running so that we can be successful with it for two or three, you know, if we're doing a two or three year plan of just, and I'm open, I'm not saying I'm sold on that, but I'm open to to talk. I've gotten some, some suggestions from other uh, school districts, and so I do have some, quote, leads or, or people I can talk to at least. What does um, something see. like that cost? <clears throat> or could, is that something you could bring back? To the board. That's something I could. Or just let us know. It, it's it's. I would say it's probably ten grand, fifteen grand. Okay, so you're not talking like hundred grand. No. Okay. No, no you're looking quarterly and roughly. Yeah. Roundly, and somebody <laughs> working like ten or fifteen grand somewhere in that range. Again, okay. depends on what. Uh, and not that that's chunk change, but it's not. Our first plan is not to spend that much money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But again, of a, 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 a good plan that is 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 actionable and I think it's more short term or long term, I think could really benefit us. Uh, you know, there's a sense of urgency to it, yeah. I think is, is yeah. helpful um, that when you timeline that out, there's something that's gonna be happening next few months or six months or nine months or, you know, you can timeline it out rather than this happens in year four, and that's so far away and that is really hard to, to get your head around. But, but I can come back with some, I can do some homework, um, and I think there's a short turnaround between now and the next meeting, but I think I can at least make some contacts 
and get some at least get some information from some outside outside organizations and see if it's somebody with kind of the parameters that we're talking about, something much shorter, you know, two or three goals. Again, probably if it's two or three goals, there's probably a lot of stuff to that two or three goals. That, right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's yeah. like here's the big thing, but there's a lot of, of, of pieces, pieces to, to that yeah. to get that together. Um, but I, to me, I think it'd be much more helpful than to have 15 things and people are trying. That's been the challenge with this last plan is we, we were really ambitious with it. <laughs> that's really one ambitious. of the, that's why it was a five year time period yeah. because we got such a big white. We didn't want to do that every two years. Yeah. It takes yeah. three days you know, every time. Maybe hey, we can knock this out in a year, you know. Um, because oh, we need we need to have something to start using it, right? Rather than build it, right. you know, right. or, like plan and then start planning again. Yeah. yeah, like plan for a period of time and then execute for a period of time until that plan no longer serves or everything in the plan is done and then right. replan. And you can do something quickly and then just have a process by which you recurrently visit it, mm -hmm. expand upon it, refine it, you know. So it's not like it's just one and done. Sure. You know? Right. Um, right. Definitely building a process, building whatever, and then tweaking what's going on right. going forward rather than redoing the whole thing, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll yeah. bring back some stuff to the next board meeting. Appreciate okay. that. Our last work session little item here is any OSBA conference feedback that you would like to share. Really cool things you heard and learned for the benefit of the board. Um, I'll go ahead and kick some of that off. Um, that some of the things that were interesting, we did have um, Ken Yancello, who uh, was our, one of the keynote speakers, and he is standing on top of a stepladder in front of you know, 600 people um, in the place that says, do not step. Um, and <laughs> wanting, to make, wanting to make a point that, um, that uh, may have, you know, may have items on a bucket list, and sometimes it feels risky, but uh, you don't typically regret the things that you do, you, you regret the things that you don't do. Um, he didn't hurt himself, for which that we were all grateful and all relieved. But um, he does, does make a good point that um, there are things out there that we want to do, want to be able to do, um, both personally and professionally, but if we don't really try, um, you know, we may regret that. So anyway, that, that was the gist of his 45 minute talk. Um, so there were a few things that, that I wanted to kind of talk through um, with things that we learned. Um, and that was, I think we will probably want to, in the policies, we'll want to look at what public participation looks like. Because um, there are some interesting things that have come about in the, uh, in the courts that may uh, impact some of our public participation. Um, policies and procedures. Um, and one thing that, that came to mind really immediately was we are kind of um, unusual in our, our policy of saying uh, three minutes per person, which is, that's part is normal, but 15 minutes per topic is not a norm. It's completely unenforceable. Yeah, because it's not, it's not enforceable because I'm, I may say I want to talk about masking, and you say you want to talk about um, health safety. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. and, and well, it might really be the same topic, but it's you're right. It's not it's not really enforceable. Most districts have some have a total limit that they put on their public participation, and they say, um, you know, it's three minutes per person. We hold strictly to three minutes um, when when somebody is finished at or somebody gets to three minutes, we start saying, thank you, your time is, is up. Um, frankly, that's a hard thing to do, um, and I struggled with that um, in that role. But they'll also say 30 minutes is our total time, and so you know, we have three, three minutes, so we'll, we'll hear from 10 people. And I, I went to a similar discussion, I haven't been the same discussion, yeah. or it was probably discussed a number of times at the conference. Mm -hmm. It was interesting to hear the gentleman talking because they, they didn't do it first come first served because then you can gain it. If you're a group of parents who really, yeah. I don't know, wants to get this coach fired, you can all make sure you get there really early. Yeah. And there's 10 of you, and so that's all that 
we can talk about. So he talked to like about how do you pick, like if maybe there's a lot of other people that sign up to talk that night about different topics, so how to not game the system, but how to not show favoritism, like whether you're pulling names out of a hat or whether you're using a random generator or whether you're just saying, okay, well, looks like these three people have totally separate things we're gonna, or, but he said, people we haven't heard from before, he tends yeah. to prioritize, like, hey, we never heard from this, this individual comes and talks about the same thing every time, and this individual we've never heard from before, so I'm gonna go with him first. And there seems to be that that had mm -hmm. standing. I think that's really hard, um, but that, that's how they would, I think maybe have something more random would be yeah. less contentious, but. But we really don't have problems with it. I mean, mm -hmm. how often do we not even have anybody speak? No, it's only when there's a really a high profile something. Yeah. Yeah. During COVID, um, yeah, we had let people, 28 people talk that one night or whatever, and I think it was appropriate we did so. But I, I, yeah. I agree okay. with you about, I think it's hollow to say we're gonna limit any one topic to 15 minutes. I think yeah. it's just wasting yeah. breath to say that. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly with the three minute guidance. And if you look, just go to YouTube and you'll see some of these board meetings that really get going really, really interestingly. They also, it seems like a universal constant here that if there's like a three to five minute limit at yeah. school board meetings. So I think three minutes is sufficient. But otherwise, I don't think we have any issues here because people just, you know, there aren't that many to come out and we're done in 15 minutes. And, and I'm hesitant to do anything that limits people's ability to come and talk to us because yeah. I think that goes against our need to communicate. I love if there, but if there is a situation that arises where it does happen, it's good to have those options. But I, I hate to do anything that's, you know, silences their voice. I think okay. a policy in place is, is good though, like three yeah. minutes and 30 minutes total. We can deviate from that mm -hmm. should we need to, right. but maybe we have a bunch of other, like that one meeting, we went on for a long time, and that, maybe that was needed, but we also were supposed to talk about strategic plan, like that night, and we never got to it. Yeah, Like, we didn't get to the business of the district because we spent two and a half hours hearing a lot of the same thing over and over again. So maybe things need to, like, I, I didn't like that. Maybe that needed to be a separate meeting. Maybe there needed to be another follow-on meeting that didn't have public participation so we could get to the other business that we had a table that night. But, um, um, another area that um, I mean, we can, uh, I'm not really trying to debate policy, uh, but, right. but also a recommendation was um, within it you say, uh, we're going to restrict our, uh, our public communication time to residents, employees, and people who have a vested interest in the district, like your contractors with your with your district, and so forth. So um, that that was from the uh, Mason City School Board, uh, their attorney. That was, it was making advocated space. or seen as a best practice, or no, it was a thing that they that they found to be helpful. So not necessarily advocating for everybody, but to say this was something, you know. And, and they, the, one of the things that they showed was uh, a, a scenario in Texas where they showed the same two people who were showing up in multiple different school right. districts to advocate for whatever their particular platform was, but claiming to be part of the district and all that kind of stuff. So it's, we, have a, we have a little bit of an easier time um, that particular session, we are talking about the same session. Okay. It was run by the president of Mason's board is also an attorney. And yeah. he was the presenter of the whole session. Yeah. So he talked about some things that they had done to and recognizing that it's been a contentious time lately, but then these are some things that have served them well. Yeah. Can you do that though? They have. Yeah. Well, they have. That I mean yeah. I'm not saying we, they should. I, right. I didn't agree with everything. I mean, they did, but it was an interesting perspective. Yeah. Right. If we're seeing that we're having trouble, we can make those changes. But I think if anybody makes the effort to come, I mean, I want to hear what they have to say. Sure. But I do, somebody did bring up a question Is it a legal requirement that we allow, that we have people state their address? Is that, is that something? It's part of our policy. It's part of our policy. I just, People were uncomfortable now that it's live streamed. We don't know who's in the live stream rooms. I know. And then uh, people know that they're here and not at home. 
I know yeah, public I city does, does the same thing. I think yeah. it's a common practice in when you give public uh, comment to identify yourself. But I think what they're trying to get to is are you, are you even if we don't preclude somebody from Seattle, Washington, for coming and talking at our meeting, right? We can really maybe take what you know, you know, been trying to solve if they're not if we realize they don't have any dog in the fight in our community. So. Right. So I think there's a reason they do that, but I, I think it's worth exploring because we dealt with something in you know, personal legal jeopardy or something like that. But I think it's common practice, and I don't think anybody just 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 created that. It's probably something in the laws of the state or something for public comment. I, I believe it is common practice. I'm personally okay with that also, just because there are so many other ways to, to communicate with the board. You can email. You can find a phone number easy enough. Yeah. You can come to a school event and talk to people that. Having that be policy, which is common practice at a public meeting, I think is probably appropriate. Yeah. And then finally, the other thing I have just to say is, you know, I talked about this before. I can get a copy of what the um, the platform is for OSBA, that, so we can kind of see what they already advocate for. So I'll be happy to do that and open it up to other perspectives on things that people saw at the OSBA conference. I'll just, I'll just throw in my one and a half cents on the public participation because I said it on many of those two. I just, just for me personally, I would always like to err on the side of letting people speak. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that there, well, first of all, that's why we get paid the pennies that we do to, to, to listen to that, and that's, that's appropriate. You should be able to um, you know, petition your elected representatives at any time for a believer in that. Knowing that if things ever do absolutely get out of control and, you know, torches start being thrown. There are tools at our disposal based on policy and whatnot. That, but, uh, you know, and I think that that shows the culture that we've built in the last year and a half is that there have been some eight hour high energy meetings. And, you know, the chair made the decision, I think it was the right one at the time, that, hey, we're going to waive the 15 minute limit. We're going to waive the 30 minute limit. Um, I personally think that that's good. Just me. But do we think it's wise to move, knowing that the three or 15 minutes per topic is a useless thing, in my opinion? Like, That's you, you cannot regulate it. But having some, some alternative that we can waive right. where we want, but having some other alternative, I think, might be a good idea. Or else it's brought back completely because it's yeah. Yeah. not. I would agree. It's too easily circumvented. You don't know what people are going to say until they say it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Would you mind not to put it on you? Can you make a note to talk with Neola or whoever because that is a policy that we have to change? And, and yeah, either it's just striking that 15 minute topic limit or coming up with an alternative to bring back to the board. Yeah. But, but, but three minutes, I think, is appropriate. Yeah, right. time to, and, and also, like, and, so that people know, that's not to cut anybody off, it's not to make anybody shut up. That's truly the goal of that is so that each speaker can be treated fairly and equally. Right. That it might be seen as unequal if one speaker is allowed to go on for 15 minutes just because that's what they prepared, and another speaker on the opposite side of the same issue only goes two minutes because that's what they prepared. That, that's, a, that's an equality goal yeah. is why that three minute exists. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. Anything else have anything that they want to share? No, I, say in the OSBA was conference beneficial. was really good. The student achievement fair was outstanding, seeing what all the kids were doing. Mrs. Rivera took the supportive peers group, and they, uh, there was tons of positive feedback on that. Um, I did go to the John Lithgow talk, and it was really good about mm -hmm. arts and education and making sure that that's valued. So, little Perfect. fan girl, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it was really <laughs> nice to see yeah. <laughs> You know, they honored actually my neighbor across the street. Making me hug out. I really regret it. Uh, I don't think I fully appreciated what it is. And secondly, I had intense travel starting in September. I mean, overseas twice and all the way across the country multiple times. And uh, uh, so just like I couldn't, but I, I will really look on the floor for next year. I did I would reflect upon uh, when we had the deep discussion last meeting I was at about how many. Um, um, SROs to have, you know, and so as I understand, you had some conversations with folks there, and they talked about other ways they've leveraged coverage. You know, so one of the conversations I want to have with our 
you know, since you, obviously all know I was in favor of four, for now we're just doing two. But th there may be some community ways of addressing that. Um, you know, so I, I, I took note of the statements you made, uh, and that one on the SRT. I will bring that up. Uh, you know, with our as we meet with our local law enforcement on ways to address. You know, yeah. not necessarily having always constant presence at each school. And I took a few notes in that session that I thought I'll share with you. I think I shared most of them, but yeah, ways to just informally increase police presence and just parking cars, whatever, being used at the time, or having just officers pop through each building on, as part of their shift or whatnot. Um, different schools are doing different things. Um, along the same vein, as since we've been really focusing on safety and security over the last year, I passed this information along to Jenna's segment already, as well as the transportation department, but um, met with representatives from a company that do uh, specifically a professional development for bus drivers and transportation regarding not just not just active shooter snares, but recognizing that those are one of the softest targets and those individuals who are driving a bus are on their own. And so this company um, does a full day of PD, including driving the bus and simulating and get out in the, in the yard uh, with the bus drivers to talk about de-escalation techniques, how to um, recognize something before it starts, what to do when it does start, how to maneuver your bus if something is going down of a violent nature in the back, and how to, like, how to, how to do all of that safely. Um, I was very impressed with um, what what these guys were were showing. Um, and they're out of somewhere up in northern Ohio, so I don't think they have engaged any districts as far south as we are. Um, but I passed their name along. I'll pass it on to you, Kevin, because it might be something to bring up. But I mean, it's kind of in that safety. It's safety, but it's also security. But um, they express that a lot of bus drivers are really appreciative because they end up going to all the regular PD that doesn't, a lot of it doesn't really apply to them so much. And they just sit through it or else they're excluded from it and this was a PD that was specific to them. And these guys are a mix of law enforcement and specialists in that area, but also transportation mm -hmm. folks who know how to drive buses and how difficult that is and those kinds of scenarios. So. Um, the, the name of the company escapes me right now, but I did pass along that info to Jenna's. Might be the same company. We had a similar PD two years ago with Waynesville. We shared the, the cost with Waynesville. Some folks came in and it's, it's recognizing you're on the bus route, things that look out of normal, how to respond to those things. Yeah. And those, it looks very, sounds very similar to okay. that. I'm not sure if that's the same group or not, but I know it cost something because we shared the cost with Waynesville. <clears throat> we this... kind of over, we came over here and we. Yeah. presentation and it was two three four hours they do a full day this company this particular company does a full day they didn't give me an exact price because they said it kind of depends but they said generally in the magnitude of 10 to 15 grand was the big one and i was like are we talking about mm -hmm. yeah yeah how much we're talking about? um but that they take your whole and they said for a district our size they could do it in one day but big a Lakota or something, they have to break their department into multiple days and they might be there a whole week by a district our size, they would do it. But it would be a full day, partially classroom, partially like actually simulating. Like they go out and they simulate these events happening in our buses and make the drivers go through the process of getting the bus pulled over safely. And like, um, it's not as really engaging. And since we've focused on all of that so much and we haven't really put much focus on to how safe our buses are. Uh, that's probably one of the bigger standouts from my conference for me. For those of you that were there, was there any discussion about, um, or I guess that was the position on this proposal that was uh, brought up right at the end of the year about renewing, or sorry, revising the uh, Ohio Department of Education to the Ohio Department of Education and Workforce. It's, it's uh, <clears throat> I don't know about this thing. It seems pretty radical, uh, basically uh, change the way that Ohio State Board of Education is uh, working. 
basically it will become a government sorry governor function of our a lot of our responsibility will become a governor governor function versus a you know a board and uh, frankly I have significant concerns about that um, I don't think any of you were smart on that or if it was discussed there I don't think there's anything think formal. Said, it was mentioned a couple of times. There, was, there wasn't anything formal that I saw I in any of the breakout sessions. There have been emails and everything, but at the conference, uh, uh, just me personally, my personal thought is I much prefer having local representation of elected representatives on a board rather than some type of a czar at the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's House Bill 178. It was linked with a couple other bills and they all went down in flames right there at the end because I think they tried to link too much together. Yeah. This kind of came out of nowhere, I think, like in September. And next thing you know, we're talking about essentially divesting the Ohio Department of Education as we know it, and essentially putting those responsibilities in the office of the governor. And maybe people are happy with the current governor we have, but you know, uh, next next round maybe maybe people in general aren't in the educational realm, and now all of a sudden you're kind of stuck with you know Azar, like you said, Mike. And, uh, so I don't know. I don't know if we as a board need to get a little bit smarter on it. Maybe make some. Uh, if we, you know, maybe we'll support it if we go investigate a little bit. But I think it, it's not insignificant. I think we need to take a look at this and potentially come up with a board position and convey that to the state. Um, yeah, just provide some more information on there. They tried to, the legislature tried to get it through lame duck in, the, in, in December there, but all the organizations, FASA, OASBO, and OSBA, when I say all the organizations, those three, uh, were against it at the surface level of, you're trying to ramp this down, but you need to have yeah. more conversation, more input, more, more talk about this, so it didn't get voted in. Have, and however, it's Senate Bill 1. It's already there. Mm -hmm. The Senate had his Senate Bill 1 to essentially bring it down to whatever's in the Constitution about the State Board. Those are the things that the State Board can do. What's in the Constitution? Everything else then would be pushed to this, they call it the DU, Department of Education and Workforce, is the, the DEW. At least it's the DU. No, not DU, but the DU. I saw the DU, but the DU, Department of Education and Workforce. Um, it has a lot of momentum in, in the Senate, obviously, and, and I think it's a, uh, Republicans are, are behind it, obviously, that Senator mm -hmm. Huffman is oh, well, I mean, yeah, no. enough, to, yeah. enough to, to get it there, um, to, uh, to, to get it um, as Senate Bill 1. Um, I, 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 I think it's going to be hard-pressed not to, to pass, but... I think we're a long way away from that. Obviously, it's still in the Senate, it's still in hearings. Um, it just puts a lot of power into um, the state house there. It really concerns me. I just, um, again, it could, it could be awesome if you got the right governor, you know. I'm not saying whether our current one is or is not, but just, you know. Uh, but if, if, if how education is conducted in the state is largely driven by the, the personality of the governor at the moment, I think that's that's reckless. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I personally often reflect upon how the state deals with our education system. And I, 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 at times, I feel honestly that they're adversarial mm -hmm. uh, towards public education. And uh, I would and uh, support you know, that perspective. What's that? I would support that yeah. perspective. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> here's what's happened: the the legislature they make the law, and then they say ODE, Ohio Department of Education, you implement. Well, what you gave us in timelines is not reasonable, and so that's where I think the friction and the the, the uh, some of the, the pushback against ODE is. The legislatures make these rules, laws, whatever mandates, and then ODE is is understaffed and or um, not reasonable timelines to do things. For example, the dyslexia training, the timelines that they put into that were not reasonable, and that's why it came out late and. And it's a little bit more complicated than they thought when pushed on the shove, the devil's in the details of how that's all done. And then, so. Um, it's not different than other agent government agencies. The federal government does that to us all the time, too. I, I think it's a really complex issue because the powers that the State Board of Education really had were really had no power and they're made up of this weird mix of appointed people and elected yeah. people yeah weirdness like they even just got to they were just more like advocates or consultants or whatever like they didn't really have any power over anything 
either. So if that goes away, if, if, if just that is being given to some other body, then I don't, I don't, it's hard to say, like, if, if all of a sudden that is going to become power, which is, which was not previously actual power, if that makes sense. At least, you know, at the board level where you have some mixture, I think mostly appointed, is that right? And some elected, like nine appointed and eight elected or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so at least you have a body that's dedicated to discussion, to debate, to being informed versus, you know, what ultimately could just be two or three people advising the governor who's making a decree. You know? And maybe I'm oversimplifying what's going on there and maybe not even speaking knowledgeably about it. But I think that's roughly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, but, I think but, that's, uh, I mean, to me, I think all the board members should be elected, you know, and be able the state to have their voice. Um, but it seems like, you know, already the governor had significant influence on how the, the board could conduct itself, and now it looks like he's wanting to essentially swallow all of it, you know, and I just, I'm not a fan of that, as I understand it. But I'm open-minded, I'll listen. Yeah. I need to read more, learn more, but uh, first reaction is this is bad, really bad. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just, I have always failed to fully understand the role of the State Board of Education. Like, what comes out of them is things like letters urging us to do something. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. Good. Are we, <laughs> any, <laughs> are we yeah. any more discussion about OSBA? Because yeah. if not, um, I would like to make a motion such that the board will meet in executive session for the purpose of considering the employment and compensation of a public employee per RC 121.22 G1. Second. Second by Mrs. Dorn, thank you. Uh, quick point of discussion, I try to remember this, I usually fail. Uh, a couple of things just for folks who aren't familiar with the executive session for your own edification. Uh, number one, we are not allowed to make any decision or vote in executive session, uh, we never do that. And second, we are not allowed and we never talk about any item that is not specifically what I just read. Uh, Mr. Lyman, please call the roll to go into executive session. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. All right, motion passes. We are in executive session as of 11.30 a.m.
Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're unmuted and then one yes. can you All right, we are out of executive session at 1.29 p.m. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. So moved by Mrs. Dorn. <laughs> Second. And seconded by Mrs. Anderson. Uh, can I call Yep. Uh, Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Kinsey's a yes. Mr. Carpenter. Yes. And Mrs. Dorn. Yes. We're adjourned at 129. There we go. Oh. See you all later. Yeah. Have a good one.